All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let me just adjust some volume here. Uh, can I do this? No, I can't do this yet. Okay. All right. Should have done this before I started the stream, but who cares? Uh... Alright. So you're probably wondering what the hell I'm going to be doing tonight, uh, given the title. You will see. You guys will fucking see. Actually, should I have music playing for this? I don't know, should I have music? I'll save the music just in case, but otherwise, yeah. Alright, so let us join the call. I have with me two guests. That's right, not one, but two. Two guests. And that is these two nerds here. Let's, so let's, let's join in. Um... <laughs> We Hello. have a host. Hello. 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 Are we live? We are live, and yeah, we are live. I okay. set the you know volumes and everything. I think we're good. I think we, we are good. good. And that fishy boy, he is lovely. I I love he's him. He's a baby. He he is baby. I I I must agree. He is baby. I like the sort of lure interacting with the hat it reminds me of like feather plumes you'd put in your head yes all right <laughs> so uh doc for yes. people in my audience who are not familiar with you or just you know, or just don't really know anything i guess uh why <laughs> okay. not just explain a little bit about who you are what you do and why the hell I'm doing this? If you can, this explain is, the last one. This is rare for me. Usually my uh, reputation precedes me. And I do not mean that in a braggy way. It's just, oh my, every time I meet someone, it's usually, oh my gosh, I hear so many stories about the stupid stuff you've done. I, I apologize. I the I yeah, I, I, I'm sorry I was not able to uh, accurately spread the the reputation that you have, you know, laid out in front of you. I, I, my apologies that I am just so, that I've done such a poor job at doing so. Please oh no, you're forgive fine me, making the Dark Man. Horse pulling out a last place, getting to make my own first impression so that people's opinion of me isn't, oh, you're the one who can vomit on command, aren't you? <laughs> I, I... I did not know that was part of your reputation, but, you know... It yes. is a superpower. Alright, so this is Doc. He can puke on demand, and we're going to talk about allergy. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Um, I'm a... Uh, I guess since I don't have a formal degree in paleontology, I'd still class as an amateur paleontologist, but I work in paleontology. I'm an educator at a museum, so I give tours, lectures, uh, outreach programs to schools. Uh, stuff like that, just to help educate the public on prehistoric animals. Uh, because of that, it means I have to learn a lot about almost every f uh, bit of the prehistoric record. And by every bit, I mean I don't know a lot about fossil plants, and I don't know enough about fossil oceanic fish, only about freshwater ocean, or only freshwater uh, lake fish in the fossil record. So as long as you stay away from those two parts of the false record, I'm golden. Uh, two gold. well, maybe not golden. I'm bronze. I'm bronze. Well, given what we're doing, I don't think we're going to be really talking about the fossil record. <laughs> given that we're going to be going on uh, oh, speculative... <laughs> we're going to be going on speculative uh, zoology. They're going to be nerding out, and I'm going to be here being stupid and drawing pretty pictures. All right, this is... Gonna... That's also... I'm here uh, with you guys. That's also Mango. <laughs> Mango. Or Elena, or Bab. Or Bab. Some yeah. Brit who just kind of walked in. And they have a blushy little fish dude. 
That's a nice blushy little fish dude. I, I approve of your blushy little fish dude. So yeah, if anyone is like spooked in chat, I'm here. I love you. I'm also confused. <laughs> that is all. Oh god. Yeah. Uh hello fossil man and hello mango, says so the how sus are we Uh same smart man, says some off. And we got five viewers, that's not bad. Alright, so nice. What we're going to be doing tonight is some speculative uh, zoology. And if you don't know what that is, well, it's pretty self-explanatory for the title, I would assume. But I'm going to explain it anyway, because I feel like I should. Uh, so speculative zoology is basically understanding what we have basically here on Earth and putting... Uh, hypothetical situations into the mix. Uh, basically, this is where you get uh, subjects like exobiology, or some people call it astrobiology, where we would look at possible hospitable planets uh, that we have discovered. So and the idea of, okay, if we were to have an ecosystem with these parameters or take a modern ecosystem and change this, how would animals adapt to fill the niche? Exactly, exactly. So cool. And being the biology nerds that we are, I think, you me. know what, who else is qualified? <laughs> who else is fucking qualified? I will say, though, having a uh, history in paleontology very much does help, because you gotta know where you've been to know where you're going. So very true, my man. So very, very true. And, like, Dougal Dixon was a paleontology... Well, he was a paleo-artist that then stepped into, uh... Speculative evolution. Was he the guy who wrote the books? He wrote Man After Man and After Man. Yeah, those books. So, he those are the also books wrote. Uh, he also wrote the new nerd. dinosaurs under the concept of what if the dinosaurs didn't die out at the end of the Cretaceous and they survived until today? What would they look like? Right. Where Where are we gonna start? Where are we gonna start? Well, uh, if you study animals that are dead, you call it beyond the paleontology I see what you were trying to get there <laughs> I see the joke I acknowledge the joke pretty good pretty good we see you Connor we hear you and we we accept you but moving I did on not say I accepted the joke <laughs> well you, you acknowledge the joke <laughs> I mean, you don't accept it as funny, but you accept it as the concept of, oh, this is supposed to be a joke. <laughs> oh, <whoa. laughs> Yo, I'm just here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let, 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 okay, so let's let's get started. Uh, I think okay. first it would be a good idea to you know set the scene. So, what do we want to work with? Uh, do we you know? Do we want to go with current trends and a possible future? Or do you want to go off of, like, uh, some hypothetical, you know, planet? Or... Yo, trends like fashion trends? Like, can we have, like, a chicken and, like, a crop top and some Uggs? No, I, I meant, like, no. ecological trends. <laughs> okay, fine, okay. I meant, like, oh, the planet's fucking getting hotter and shit. <laughs> The oceans okay, okay. are getting a little bit more acidic. And there's it okay. could be cool to see um, cephalopods evolving to fill more niches. Um, because I know they're thriving in the current ocean. Uh, or the way the oceans are changing. Loving it. What the fuck is a cephalopod? Oh, a, oh, a nautilus! Uh, well, uh, cephalopods are squids. Uh, octopi. Octopus. Nautilus. They sit in their uh, shell and float around. They're so cute. <laughs> I like them. <laughs> Alright, I guess we're starting with the cephalopods. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Well, giving current Fred. Yep, that's a Nautilus. That's a okay, Nautilus. if we're starting with a Nautilus, what do Nautiloids eat? Uh, I would guess fish? Or... I'm just looking up chambered nautilus to see what their diet is. I, I can't look up anything. I need another screen. <laughs> I need another well, screen. I've got two screens, so I've got us covered. 
Why don't you make it so it's window capture instead of display capture? And then you can. Look I think stuff I up speak for time. everyone when I say that I really hope this guy plays Pokemon. Ron does not play Pokemon. Oof. He made a like. Correct me if I'm wrong. You made a video where you ranked Pokemon. Uh, that's a word for it. I think that was the goal, but that is not what happened. <laughs> yeah, you you were looking at like the biological possibility of the Pokemon actually like, existing. I I just sent out a big message to a bunch of people said hey what do you think or send me pokemons you think i would have an interesting uh opinion on i remember yeah. there was one that looked like a sauropod with leaves on it uh oh. yeah uh, tropius tropius i liked tropius yes because i it didn't like, like a when i found did it does it fly i feel like i found out it flew and i didn't like that after uh, i think so yeah i hate that with some pokemon i I do have a weird pet speculative Evo theory about flying sauropods, but not now. What about well, flying I, I, I don't think you can really apply biology to Pokemon, because Pokemon aren't really based on, like, real animals. Well, they are oh, and they no, aren't, but... Wedging like, things where they don't fit is really fun sometimes. Okay, so Nautiloids <laughs> are, uh... They eat carrion and detritus, as well as shellfish and crab. Okay, all right, all right. Well, um, I can't see those going away. What, Dodgy? Oh, they're definitely not going away. Yeah, they're definitely not going away. And um, what feeds on them? I would imagine sharks? Um, because sharks have been known to eat squid. I don't see why they wouldn't be you know, eating or at least trying to go after Nautiloid. Hmm. Nautiloids lack a larval stage. Really? I they are born as stage? miniature versions of the adults. I did not know that. <laughs> oh. So, so well, they're like they're like Minecraft mobs. And it was not until 2017 that the first one was bred in captivity, as the eggs take between 9 and 15 months to hatch. Jesus. So how do you think they'd adapt? Well, they'd be move uh, for this. They're moving farther north and south. If we're so just taking current north. trends, and yeah, out well, as yeah, we're get warmer. well. Let's let's go with uh, current trends. Let's just remove humans from the picture, but keep the current trends going. So, yeah, the ocean levels will be rising. Uh, so the Earth's bigger? temperature would be getting warmer. So I would imagine they would either, you know, they would move north and south, or they would go deeper, where they mm. could get giant. Well, they're um, ectotherms, I believe. Please explain. Right. Uh, ectotherm is an animal that gets the uh, heat for its body from the outside of its body instead of generating heat. They're, they're ah. cold-blooded. It, yeah, cold blooded, hot blooded, those so, are just so, not so. the most accurate e terms. Yeah. So, it'd be a good thing. Uh, oh, man. It'd be really cool to see um, giant nautiluses that live on the surface and use their shells as big heat sinks to help keep them warm. Heat Ooh, sink? that would be cool. Oh, so they'd, so they'd cool. grow out like, like this. Heat sinks are like, are like raggedy, right? They have like lots well, of layers, uh, right? In nature, it'd just be something big to help yeah, absorb yeah, heat. It, it, so they it just would get be really bigger. big. Um, Although, they could have weird shapes on the top, possibly to keep yeah. seabirds from landing on them. Oh, you know what? You know what? What if it had a sail? Like a Portuguese man-of-war? A sail, like, across the top? Like this? Going back? Yeah, yeah. What you you see, a, a like, a, like a, a Portuguese man-of-war has, like, this big sail on its back, so it catches wind. Portuguese um, man of Okay, war. question. Since I'm trying to go along with what's being discussed, could a world where all land is covered in water have a viable ecosystem? Well, firstly, yeah. well, yeah, firstly, yes. Uh, but uh, secondly, the, uh, um, sorry, Ron, you want to go? Don't, I don't mean to interject. I just think and then immediately say there's no in between. <laughs> there's no in between. Um, firstly, there's well. Even if all the ice melted on Earth, there's not enough water to cover all the land. So no matter what, there will be land. Ooh. That's what I was going to say. 
Um, I've never heard and of that I, I was going to say that there are, uh, if you go back really, 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 really early in Earth's history, like the uh, uh, Devonian, and I want to say the Cambrian. I'm just going to pull up myself geologic time scale because I get really hazy once you get about 400 million <laughs> years back. As you should. Um, but like during the Devonian period, most um, life was in the oceans. And it wasn't until competition got really, really uh, tight, really, really uh, tense, that animals started to try to get away from the competition and climb up onto the land. But yeah, Devonian, Silurian, and Ordovician, pretty much everything is going to be in the oceans. Uh, at one point, plants got up onto land. I want to say that was during the uh, Silurian that they got onto land. They got everywhere during the Devonian and then the Miss Mississippian and Pennsylvanian are usually known together as the Carboniferous because the whole planet was covered in super forests from what we can tell. Ooh. It's where most of our coal comes from. Ah. Yay for coal. Huzzah! Fossil flu fl fuels. <laughs> what's Don't this, worry. What's You'll... this uh, thing on top of it? This like this like shell looking thing. Oh, oh that's... Um... It's a protrusion from the shell. It's so that when they pull their tentacles in, they can pull that down and sort of oh, hold it's themselves like a hat. closed. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It, or, well, more a like a hat helmet, or like the visor on an armored helmet. And then this little taily thing is the actual octopus squid thing. Yeah, uh, those are its tentacles. Yes, and then I'd I imagine think if you can see got... the siphon. What's this? This little eye thing. Is That's this an its eye. eye. That is its oh, eye. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. Do um, cephalopods so? don't have... Uh, it's weird. Cephalopods convergently evolved eyes with pupils, which means they evolved it the same as other animals, but they didn't go come from the same starting point. They just Ooh. ended up with a similar structure. Yeah. Do you think if they moved lower in the water, if that would develop, like, go away? Well, we're... Designing one that goes it, closer to the surface, so oh, okay. the so eye would the eye probably would be facing downward more. And, Ooh. Uh, I would think so the tentacles would also get longer. Oh, yeah. So that as would, they just passively float by, they can grab things. Yeah. That's neat. Okay, I'll rework that. This is the fun thing about <laughs> sketching. I can just start drawing the thing, and then you can be like, yo... Well, wouldn't it be cool if this happens? And I'll be like, yeah, let's do this. Oh, man. And it'll just grab onto things. What would it grab onto? Like shellfish? Well, well I... considering it's getting big, I'd imagine it'd just be grabbing Big old fish. fish boy. This one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. This guy, let's go. Uh, pretty much anything it could uh, get its tentacles around. What kind of a mouth parts do they have? Uh, well, most cephalopods have a beak, so... Yeah, I'm just assume... thinking about the, uh... I, mean, uh, I, I would assume... Specialization. Because I know that functionally, um... Uh, squid and octopus beaks have differences in the same way that, you know, a grizzly bear's mouth and a polar bear's mouth have differences. They live in slightly different areas, eat slightly different things. Ooh. Oh, and in case you I didn't mean, know, uh, Mango, uh, polar bears I are don't know descendants. Anything. Polar bears are descendants of grizzly bears. Aww. Of course, brown bears I'm thinking of. Uh, uh, grizzly bear too. is a colloquial name for a subspecies of the more common brown bear. Ah. ah. Um, but yeah, uh, basically, what happens is happened is that a population of brown bear just went north. And that's it. That's how we get polar bears. Aww. Yep, as they're adapting for the cold and the uh, much more uh, well, arctic, but much more aquatic position that they're in. Yeah. I think the weirdest bit of bear evolution is that seals are related to bears. Seals look like dogs to me. I can see so that. Cute. Well, uh, I see that. seals, bears, and seals are both in the caniform superfamily. What is the um, caniform? So, Canids. pretty much all living carnivorous mammals, so all mammals alive today that eat meat, is their main thing, not counting weird omnivores. 
Weird. As their main it's thing, all feet. carnivorous mammals are split into feliforms or caniforms, or cats and dogs. Mm. So everything is either more related to a cat or more related uh-huh. to a dog. What about uh, a fox? Is a fox more cat or dog? Foxes are um, not just caniforms, they're canids. They are dogs. Um, so a canid is just one step closer. Think of caniforms being your entire, you know, grandfather's side of the family. And then canids would be you and your siblings. Uh, There's still a part of that larger group, but your subgroup is much more closely related to you. Some awe uh, has the question, polar bears are so much bigger than any other. Why do you think that is? Uh, it's because... Body fat. I yeah, do not well, mean to keep interrupting you. You can continue. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, it's okay. I mean, um, well, basically, larger animals are more hardy when it comes to surviving extreme conditions. Um, it's not just that. There well, is a concept called gigantothermy, where just an animal being big means it generates more heat than a small animal would. Well, yeah, I was also going to bring up uh, mammoths versus elephants. Mammoths are, you know, noticeably bigger than elephants. But however, they also have uh, shorter appendages. Um, and yeah, what else? Yeah, for the the woolly mammoth. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, polar bears getting big is partially an adaptation to help keep them warm. Another one would be competition with things like elephant seals. Ooh. Um, you're living in the same turf as elephant seals and walruses are, and they are very big and very mean. Yeah, so you got to be big and mean as well. Rip. Where do um, animals get their color from? Give me a second. I, I have I have to get my cat. He's demanding my attention. Right. Where do what gets their color from? Oh, just animals in general. Like, do you think this guy's color would change if he raised further to the surface? What you would probably see happening is on the top, he would have blues and darker colors, and then on the bottom side, whichever side is the bottom, he would have lighter <laughs> colors. Mm. Uh, that's an adaptation that most sea-dwelling animals have. It's so that if something above them looks down, oh. they can blend in with the dark water. And if something oh, above, below so them cool. looks up, they blend in with the light sky. That's I'm back. so cool. I always thought it would be like something to do with mating or something. I mean, it is with birds, right? There most is the that a lot of times, and a lot of times animals do both. Yeah. I'm um, back. Hello, Nina. Welcome back. I would imagine um, this a big nautilus would want to camouflage because there would still be things like sharks in this uh, uh-huh. scenario. There would probably be less. There would probably be less. Well, I don't know. If, if humans are gone... Well, I'm, I'm not saying sharks. I'm saying things like sharks. There yeah, would okay. be but a large There's also large the shell. Like, when, like, there's also the shell, so couldn't the shell also not be... Tasty. I don't know. This well, uh, one, what I. Yeah, what happened? No, no, no. I'm just reading my reading my chat. Um, Nina okay. is asking what's going on. Basically, we got Doc here. Doc, say hi. Hello. And we got Mango. Mango, say hi. Hello. And we are talking about theoretical, not theoretical logs. Evolution. Speculative zoology. And I have Daji here, and he's being very bad. And we're, um, we're looking at nautiluses. If if everything was meant to heat up, we've come up with they'd move closer to the top of the water, and they'd probably get like a heat sink on the top of them, like a fin, as well. Uh, what else? <laughs> uh, downward facing eyes, longer tentacles, uh, bigger in size. Um, yeah. Um. We're just doing a neat little interesting stuff stream. I was going to say with their shells, I believe uh, on a, in this scenario, I feel like uh, cetaceans, <gasps> so dolphins and whales, wouldn't have much of a problem in this new yeah. world. Yeah, yeah, I, I and, don't think... And with uh, orcas being incredibly smart and incredibly sociopathic, I feel like they'd find a way through that orcas shell. Orcas are sociopathic? Oh yeah, killer uh, whales are fucking... 
monsters. Oh, so they get their name from somewhere. I heard. I remember hearing that they were nice. That's no, funny. they're no, they're monsters. No. Uh, killer whales are known to, despite being able to almost swallow a harbor seal's hull, will instead smack them into the air forty feet with their tails the just fuck? to do it. They will toss their prey, and like they will do like a whole Sea World esque, you know, play thing, just for shits and giggles. They're oh also one of the few pred- predators that is noted to have harvesting behavior, which is defined as the act of eating from a prey animal with the intention of keeping it alive so that you may feed from it again later. Um, oh my god, the way that ants make food is the smartest thing ever to me. Okay. That's oh, a- how they, uh, the like, keep... Uh, they farm! So yeah, cool. they'll keep, uh, uh leaf cutter the bugs ants. that make honeydew. Leafcutter ants, their, uh, uh, keep fungal farms... Other species of ant have been known to eat from aphid, uh, well, aphid butts. Yeah, aphids, that's what I was trying to think of, the things that make honeydew. Honeydew. Killer whales and then there's are one terrifying the monster ants, ants like the siafu that just that strip the forest the floor kill. of everything. Uh, I don't think anything really kills just for the kill. I mean, I hear, like, cats will, you know, kill something not to eat it, but just for practice. But no. that's not really killing just for killing. You know, they're getting, they're um, getting to practice it. It's I mean, debatable. Um, orcas are actually known to kill great white sharks, eat only the liver, and then leave the rest of the shark. Yeah, uh, orcas are fucking... They're, they're, they're monsters. I don't know and, what um, to say. Uh, uh, hold on, the... we got a question. I've actually heard pretty negative things about dolphins and how they're actually pretty capable of intentionally drowning people. Is that true? Uh, well... Uh, I, mean, I am dolphins. not a fan of dolphins, so anything I say on the matter will be heavily, heavily biased towards the anti-dolphin propaganda. I mean, oh, I've heard oh stories God. of, like... How do, how do I put this? Like, dolphins... How do I want to say this? Like, I've heard plenty of, like, decent things about dolphins. Like, you know, there's apparently this one pod that's has this symbiotic relationship with these uh, fishermen in, I think, Peru or Chile or somewhere. Yeah, um, in an area like that. The, it, I was going to get to that. I was going to get to that. The, I believe um, the King to of the Hill interject episode while is... he's arguing with chat, um, I was going <laughs> to say, I think... So a lot of the problems come from not only dolphins, but with other animals. They're really, really intelligent. Which means that they've got more motives than we the more stereotypical evolutionary motives of eat, reproduce, don't mm-hmm. die. Well, I mean, Which means that, like us, you get some people that are really nice and help people out, and then you get some people that are Hitler. Um, oh my god, it Hitler could just be, dolphin. you know, you get the Gandhi of dolphins, who teaches his pod to help these fishermen fish, and they get some fish out of it, and then you just get the Hitler of dolphins who likes to drown babies. Uh, uh, don't forget what? that, well, there's also, you know, Gandhi was also racist, just to point out. But there's also, um... Oh, yeah, I, I know, I just needed dolphins, a... like, abandoning their young if they have, like, some sort of, like, uh... Oh, all animals spinal... do that. Well, no, if the, it, I think I heard that. a story once of, like, a dolphin, uh... Baby, also, I don't know what the young is propaganda. called. Like Just having scoliosis, and it is um, there is like an evolutionary reason to kill young that are malformed. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, especially with like uh, social species, like you know, oh, I'm just sure kill it before you get it. you know emotionally attached. What? Well, and and not even that, just the idea of this thing will pass on inferior genes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yo, uh, just real quick, do you think these colors would kind of be, like, because I made it darker on the top and lighter on the bottom, do you think that would be? Uh, if anything, the idea was it sort of sticking that fin out of the water. Oh, so it would be transparent. Uh, maybe not transparent, but you could go probably more like the uh, stripes oh. on that shell, maybe work in sort of a, a brown and white striping. Also, oh. remember, darker colors tend to uh, trap heat more. So yeah. So if it's using this to... to cool off, then it would want lighter colors, and if it's using okay, it to okay. warm up, it would want darker colors. I can do that easy. Like you can <laughs> probably. 
Look at these colors. Actually, so go back to the red. The red? If you could, yeah. Like this? I actually kind of like that. I like I like the pink a lot. It does look nice. Yeah. It could even be if this is... Um, uh, Sorry, something. Kind of it, if there's the something dangerous color. about it, it's trying to communicate. Ooh, yeah. Venomous? Oh, definitely. Uh, venomous, I'm not familiar enough with cephalopods to say if there are any venomous or poisonous ones. But they oh, could, there they are. Could try to look oh, there venomous. are. Uh, the blue ring octopus. I think actually, I think uh, all octopus. Of course, the blue ring octopus is incredibly venomous. I think oh, actually God. all octopodes have venom, but I, I, but yeah, the blue ring. Um, that's like, you know, danger level for humans. Um, yeah, so it could be that. Uh, that the Nautilus... I feel like making the tentacles a more, uh, I guess, camouflagey color might or more subdued color might be better uh so like blue or... maybe like a, like an off-white like a lighter yeah. blue okay. well just that way um when they're trying to catch fish with their tentacles the fish are less likely to see the tentacle coming yeah because keep in mind i know nothing so like you y'all are yeah. gonna have to be oh, like yeah, no, no 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 again this is just all speculative it. i mean we're just making yeah. this shit up as we go yeah, but I like, just think, you know, the, the tentacles being white, a fish is going to be less likely to see that come to get it. Yeah. Whereas if something's trying it to eat it, it'll see that bright red body and take that as a danger symbol. Uh -huh. That's a trip. Oh, trying to cool down with so lighter colors, but trying to blend in from predators on the top, too. I have bean brain when it comes to marine life, so I don't know what to add. That's okay. Oh, yeah, I have Me no too, idea yo. about marine life. I'm used Bro. to stuff that lives on land or only likes to go swimming partially. <laughs> Well, that's okay, that's why I'm here. And that's why I'm here to be stupid and ask a bunch of questions so y'all don't have to. <laughs> no, no, it, it, it's alright, it's alright. Oh no, I think it's a super I neat uh, don't, thing we got going on. I don't know enough about how Nautilus shells grow, but uh, are you familiar with some of the Japanese ammonites, Pen? Uh, no, don't think so. So ammonites are like a nautilus, but their shells grow along the golden ratio, if you know about it. Oh, you mean the, the spirally thingy? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that thing. Yeah. Um, there are Japanese species of ammonites whose shells do not grow along that traditional uh, curve pattern. Okay. This is looking so cool. They just, well, there's some that grow in paperclip shapes, almost. Oh, wow. Okay, that's odd. Uh, just sending guys... a message okay, into our little Discord chat along the side. One of the paperclip shelled ones, but a different kind of Japanese okay, ammonite. Okay. Ooh. Oh, wow. So that's a Fancy. fossil. Are we dropping frames? Uh, a little bit. That's fine. Yeah, it's just art. No one's gonna notice. <laughs> yeah, just art. Yeah. Well, no, no, I, I, I meant on my end, but you know, I, th I think we're good. I think we're good. Nothing's blowing up just yet. So, do you think they'd keep the pattern on the kind of openy closey shell thingy, the little dotty pattern? Well, um, uh, Pen, do you know how closely um, nautiluses and cuttlefish are? What's a cuttlefish? No. Those are sound so cute. You don't know what a cuttlefish is? Okay, imagine a squid. Now imagine a chibi squid. Chibi squid. Oh. Yeah, that's basically it. See, there we go. Uh, I didn't big head, it. tiny little tentacles. Big head, uh, tiny little tentacles, nice flappy flap fins. I'm sorry, I just hit my mic. I'm sorry. And uh, the ability to hypnotize fish. Wow. You know, if it was fucking cute, I'd get hypnotized too. No. Oh my god. It, uh, well, it's fucking cuttlefish adorable. can yeah. change the color on their body. So what they'll do is they'll flash their body different colors rapidly, and fish will just stare at them. Oh, oh and also... There are femboy cuttlefish. <gasps> yeah, oh, uh, right small male alley. cuttlefish try to make themselves look like females. So that the larger males, the, the, you know, that can easily get a female and fight up other males, while they, you know, do what they do, the smaller males that are pretending to be females um, will just do the do with the females that the bigger male has already got. 
They're literally yeah. traps. Yep. I love it. Trap I've cuttlefish. just posted. I know we've moved a bit on, but I've just posted a bit of or a bunch of weird ammonite shells in the Discord chat. Oh, these are neat. That looks like a horn from fucking Satan. But yeah. just pluck the horn off of Satan. Actually, it, it's funny. Ammonites get their name because of Amun Ra. Oh. What is an Amun Ra? Uh, Amun Ra is the Egyptian god of the sun. Oh. Um, and when uh, Rome and Egypt were kind of doing a corporate merger, uh, they were combining <laughs> a lot of their gods <laughs> that's, together. That's a way of putting it. <laughs> um, a culturally, sort of, sort of just like the uh, Catholic Church did. They Rome would find new areas, and then after they took over those areas, they would incorporate those people's legends into their own framework. So the Romans sort of explained, "Oh yeah, Amun Ra and Zeus are the same dude." Even though Amun Ra was a god of the sun, the reasoning was that Amun Ra was the head of the Egyptian pantheon. He was the big guy in charge. And this Romanized version of Amun Ra was depicted with curled ram's horns. So hmm. the idea is that these Ammonites looked like Amun Ra's horns, and night is just, or ite, I-T-E, the suffix just means stone. So they were the stones of Amun Ra. Neat. Not in that oh. way, though. I think my uh, tablet just unplugged itself. One sec. That's all no, right. Back. Never mind. Yep. There we go. I'm cool. We go. Yeah, we there's gooch. there's a lot of really cool ways paleontology intersects with mythology. Well, yeah, because That's you know neat. most of these things were found. I mean, it has to come from when... somewhere, right? So how are yeah, ideas now? like myths myths of the Cyclops coming from mammoth skeletons. Early man was pulling out of the ground. That's so cool. Or, Isn't there uh, also like the theory that dragons, like the idea behind dragons, came from uh, you know people finding dinosaur bones? There is a direct. Okay, I, this is one of my favorite things to go off on because we have a specimen of it in the <laughs> museum. Uh, oh, the man. woolly rhino. Mm -hmm. We can trace one of its fossils back to a dragon legend. Oh. Ooh. So. I just want to post a picture. Don't know if you can show this on stream, Pen. Uh, why? But because I'm... story. I'm a storyteller. It's my craft. Uh, well, I'm. Well, I I can show it right here. I'm. I'm just showing like this, like the call screen. So yeah, okay. this is Wooly Rhino. Okay. It's it's like a rhino, but it needs a haircut. Oh. Yeah, this Wooly Rhino is a dragon. Well, guys, meet Toothless. Meet Toothless. So what had happened was uh, there was a village in Germany uh, that had found a weird skull out in the woods by their village. This is a very, very long time ago. I believe four or five hundred years ago. And Back when we being... thought, you know, diseases were caused by the air. Yeah, bad humors. <laughs> Um, oh my god, the humors. I studied those in history, actually. That's pretty epic. I love them. I, Being, I don't know what those are, but okay. I'll basically, the idea that humors are bad vibes, essentially, <laughs> that give oh you uh, death. Yeah, they can be affected by the planets, they can be affected by whatever. It's basically the levels of blood, yellow uh, yellow bile, black bile, and phlegm in your body, oh, and how okay. different weights... That's why uh, Plague people. Doctor masks, those beaks, were often stuffed with fruits and sweet-smelling yeah. things because those were thought to be good humors. Yeah. Okay, alright, alright, yeah, I think I remember that. I just forgot so, what it was called. I know if a you thing, guys! You knew Put yourselves thing. in the Yay! shoes of European. <laughs> If I'm you're sorry. a medieval European, you're walking out in the woods, and you find this skull sticking out of the rock. Hold on, I'm, I'm back to full screen. Okay, oh yeah, yeah, I would think dragon. <laughs> and you, being a medieval European, not only do not know what a rhino is, you do not know that the continent of Africa exists. <laughs> yeah, I, I would think dragon too. I mean, in all fairness, I mean, come on, look at that thing. Would you not think dragon? Yeah, and...
And they they'd taken the skull. They had a whole legend about a brave knight who killed the dragon outside of town, and the beast was so evil, its whole body burnt up except its skull, which hardened into stone in front of the knight. Fuck yeah. That's so fucking, fucking metal. metal. Can I, like, write a song? <laughs> Based on that. And there are, uh... We have accounts of how they would throw big festivals. In fact, these festivals still continue to this day. Um, around this skull, and they would have people dressed up, almost like the uh, Chinese parade dragons, dressed up in big uh, amalgamations of what they figured this beast looked like, and an actor playing the knight would slay the beast in front of the town. The only difference is now the dragon isn't a bunch of dudes in a costume. It's a 14-ton animatronic Bro. that bleeds when it gets stabbed, and that's the coolest thing ever. Dude, that sounds so crazy. cool. Why does um, Germany does like like Germany does like everything to the fucking extreme? Yeah, they do some of the coolest stuff, and then some of the come on, bro, really stuff. I, I, I wasn't going to bring up like you know Nazism, but okay. <laughs> I was just thinking like Oktoberfest or something. Also, kick-ass art supplies, all of them are from Germany. Moi, bless you. Oktoberfest! Oktoberfest! Oh, God, oh no. Oh, my God. I was a medic main back in the day. Dude, I am so obsessed with TF2. It's not even funny. It's a good game. It's a good it's, game. It's a good game. I know it's a good game. But, yeah, game. so it's we've been able to trace specifically Wooly Rhino. Okay, I forgot a somewhat important part of the story. It's not really important. It's just a cool side note. Uh, they had found a... Uh, after they found this skull, they took it, put it in their church because it was thought to be a relic of great evil, so they kept it in their church to show how good always giants over evil. And then the church burned down. <laughs> but because it was so important to them, there were immaculately kept paintings and drawings of what this skull had looked like, enough that we were able to identify it as Celadonta Antiquitus, the woolly rhinoceros. Wow. That's neat. Anyway, are, are, we, are we happy with how this looks? Or do we, do we want to move I'm on? I'm happy. Is there any changes uh, you Ron, want? Ron, do you think it needs anything? I really like it, especially sort of the, the fade to uh, pinkish, almost purple. In the uh, tendrils. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I really like that too. Like, I think it's like from an art standpoint, I think it's like a really nice color contrast and um... pastel. I love the pastel vibes. Can we like have this existing? <laughs> this well, I mean, if if I was God, I guess I <laughs> I'd make it so. But I big think big enough it... to ruin fucking tap do dance man's career. Well, you say that, but now that we can, like, manipulate things <laughs> genetics. Ron. Yes, I learned nothing from Jurassic Park. I was about to say, Ron. <laughs> Jurassic Park or Jurassic said... World. Oh my god. Isn't Jurassic well, Park not set in the Jurassic period? It's set in, like, a different period, right? Uh, Jurassic Park is Jurassic set in modern day. Park takes place. No, like... no, 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 no. It's with dinosaurs that aren't from Jurassic. Oh. Park. Oh. Most of the dinosaurs that we see, more so in the book than in the movie, um, but most of the dinosaurs that you see in the Jurassic Park movies are from the Cretaceous period, except from Jurassic World, where the main dinosaur was a Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> Why the uh, fuck did they add cuttlefish DNA? <laughs> Make it cool. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna step out for just a split yeah. second. I shall return. All right, all okay. right, man. But uh, yeah, I'm really liking this uh, Nautilus design. If you want to put it in the art channel, uh, like go ahead, man. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll throw these all in there later. But I, I think this is as far as I'm gonna go with it. So when uh, what's his face comes back, we can design more crazy shit. I'm so excited. Yeah, it looks really this nice. Is, I love the colors so much. Uh, yeah, but I, I'm I'm wondering more on a, a speculative whatever the fuck we're doing standpoint. <laughs> we just we're, we're just talking biology and 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 nerd stuff. All right, that's that's basically what we're. The grown-ups are speaking. I yeah. want the I want a cuttlefish. The boomers are speaking. Let, 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 let's get a picture of a cuttlefish. Uh, Is this spelled cuttlefish? It's it's not cuddle. It's cuttle. Like cuttlefish. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I had a feeling. 
Uh oh. I feel like uh -oh. whenever I do something. Oh, <laughs> I want a cuttlefish. God. Anyway, yeah, um, they're actually very intelligent. So they can change the color and texture of their skin like octopodes. Surprisingly, what? they can change the cut like they can change the color of their skin uh, to match their environment see. almost perfectly. However, they are colorblind. How do they do that? What? Nobody that knows. Sensors? Nobody oh, knows. Okay. It's just that they have the they have the amazing ability to match the color and texture of their environment so like to almost perfection. But they are colorblind. So is this a cuttlefish? How big is it? Is it tiny? It they vary in size. Uh, again, like when I was talking earlier, um, unlike spiders and frogs and anglerfish, the males are typically larger than the females. Um, ah, males, I think, fair. can get like a f maybe a foot and a half, two feet. I think that sounds right. While females, I think, get like around a foot. And the beta males that pretend to be females, uh, they're around the same size. <laughs> traps. But anyway, here's a, here's a fun fact. Um, males have two extra pairs of tentacles than females. So when the mm -hmm. male wants to pretend to be a female, all it does is hide those two tentacles. Oh, so it ties it back. Like a drag queen. Kind of. Yeah. That's great. I love that. That's so good. Welcome back, Ron. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, Cuttlefish, I do also want to... Look, I don't believe in welcome backs or welcomes. I, my whole life is one conversation. People just <laughs> drop in and out of it. Oh, Hi. Um, that's so, just yeah, sort of hyperbole. I just forget to introduce myself or to say goodbye ever. I just kind of walk away from people and I walk back up to them an hour later and go, okay, so about that thing I was telling you about. I do the exact same thing, except I'll talk between it, so I'll stay in the conversation, and suddenly later I'll be like, oh, and this happened, continuing a conversation that I had like half an hour ago. Yeah. I you guys I, talk to people? I, what nerds. I, I do okay. think it's really cool um, thinking of, you know, hiding, not necessarily hiding whether they're a boy or a girl. Uh, Professor Oak's not around in the ocean these days, but... <laughs> I do uh, think it's cool that cephalopods and octopus are some of the best at camouflaging because not only do they have amazing control over the color of their skin, but the texture of it. Oh, yeah, I, you, you just missed it. I, I also said that, um, you know, cuttlefish also uh, can do the same thing. They also have chromophores. Um, however, despite their amazing accuracy, they are colorblind. Yeah, uh, we do not know how cuttlefish know what color to make themselves. Yep. Oh, Ron, cuttlefish did you also... Can, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I know that there was a study um, I want to say somewhat recently, probably the last five years, that put cuttlefish in a totally dark environment. Oh, yeah. And then when like, they opened it back up, they would see the cuttlefish were already camouflaged. Yep. Oh my goodness. Like, with no light in the area to see with, they were still figuring out what color the ground beneath them was and matching it. Yeah, it it's completely unknown. These things are a little weird enigma. Also, I yeah, apologize it's... for this. I'm sharing a screen. Like, I'm streaming sharing a screen, so it's not really the best quality. Oh, is the quality bad? It's not the best. Oh, duh. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It, it's, it's fine. Uh, if you're okay. interested in seeing... Yeah, I just uh, if you're interested in seeing this, either follow Mango on Twitter. I'm sure she'll tweet these, or <sighs> join the Discord. You could join it in the uh, Twitch description. Uh, any reasons for why they have more tentacles? Combat, mobility, or like? Uh, I would imagine combat. Like males fighting. do fight each other. Um, yeah, males do fight each other, especially around mating season. Um, in in most things, the reason that the males are, or the dip, in most animals, the differences the males have to females is nine times out of ten, so that they can clobber each other. <laughs> so what are we gonna move on to now? Are we gonna are we gonna speculate? On uh, you guys, you want to do something land based, duck, or do you want to stick to the ocean with legs? 
Let's do something that with legs. Them. That uses them okay. for walking. Could mana wars get bigger? Um, hard to say. Well, uh, is there because mana wars are not a single animal? Is there anything that constrains their size? Well, no, they're they're not. Well, I guess density because they do have to float on top of the water. Yet again, I guess they would just get like a bigger gas bladder. Um, however, there are other col colonial organisms uh, called siphonophores. I believe I posted a video of that in my Discord somewhere, either in 3 Spoopy 5 Me or the aquarium. Um, and these siphonophores get freaking huge. Yeah, oxygen and pressure. All right, but we're talking about something with legs, so let's move yeah, on okay, to something with legs. with legs. Uh, again, with the set, again with the uh, setting of no humans, but current trends are still. Um, My question is: Is it just current trends are going where they are, or have humans just poofed out? They've been snapped out of existence, and everything else yeah. stays as it is. Uh, humans Aliens. poof out existence like Thanos Aliens snap happened. and uh, everything else is the same so rising tides uh, you okay, know uh, oceans are becoming are going to take over almost every land mass what's a bovine is it like a cow. cows yeah there's just like 50 different breed of cattle we keep domestic so yeah all right yeah, I, I, well, I just because we have off. massive populations of them on every single continent, except Antarctica. They'll find so, a way, so. damn it. They'll find a fucking way! They will take over the fucking world, oh my god. And they'll ruin the environment with their fucking farts and whatever. Like, great. Okay, so oh, yeah, where yeah, are we starting? Do we want to do speculative evolution, Bovid? Because I feel like it would just turn into either Super Boss cow. Taurus... Or bison latifrons, which are just a big bison and a big bull. Uh, I don't know. Hard to say. Yeah, I, I think it would just Look turn into dude. big moo cow. She's gonna beat you up. Oh god. She sees you. So yeah, if you're looking for, then? uh... Let me pull up bison latifrons since I mentioned it. I've also seen a skull of bison latifrons in person, and they are terrifying. <laughs> Did you make its eyes red? I'm gonna give it extra pair of horns as well. Oh god. There are uh, sheep that grow extra pairs of horns. Yeah, but this guy, uh, this one's different. The Jacob this, sheep. This one's a lad. The, uh... Is, I can never remember if it's a Jacob's sheep or a Jacob's goat that their name is. Uh, I have no idea. All I know honest, is I'd... that their okay. skulls cost like $400 and I'm salty because I want one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> like, I've got a bunch of other skulls. I just That's want a so Jacob's cool. goat skull to crown my collection. I mean, I don't have anything too exotic. Uh, raccoon, Bob the Cashmere, or goat, and then a, I forget which kind of goat, but it's another domestic species. Okay, uh, let's let's try to go for something that we could really change up. Okay. So, what would see. really change? I mean, how? Yeah, I was about to say crocs. Okay, are there different types of crocodiles, or uh, is there just... Oh, no. It, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. I, I just want one. I just want one. Ron. Okay. Ron. So <laughs> you've got a ton of different species of living crocodiles, mostly between crocodiles is going to be how big and muscular they're built. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then over in the New World, so north, and you're going to have alligators and caiman, which are all alligatoroids or alligatorid. I, oh I think is God. how you're supposed to pronounce it. Oh, don't don't forget, oh, there's okay. also Chinese the alligators, unless they're a species of crocodile. 
No, Chinese alligators are alligators. True alligators only exist in North and uh, North America and China. Uh, and then Cayman inhabit uh, South America. There are also crocodiles in North and South America. There's the American crocodile and then the, I think, Cuban crocodile. Hello, I also found this picture uh, while I was looking up crocodile, and I thought the crocodile was real, and that there was just a kid kind of just oh. sitting back in a fucking crocodile. Can I just... Look at this bitch. Oh, okay. God. Um... <laughs> Generally speaking, crocodiles are big and murdery, and murdery. alligators are a little less big and a tad less murdery. Just a tad. Just a tad. Enough to be I think like alligators aw, look really friendly personally. Yeah, crocs like alligators, or crocodiles look mean and like they're going to eat you and your family and enjoy it. Because they will. Alligators Except just kind of look like they're making do. It would be interesting, though, to see in a in our speculative environment what uh, crocodiles and alligators would do, because their gender is actually determined by the temperature their eggs gestate at. Okay, that that would be interesting. <laughs> I was also thinking, um, you know, with rising sea levels and everything, uh, there would you know be new turf for them. You know, just imagine, yeah. like, basically, okay, so basically, um, if, you know, one, when, how do I want to put this? so hard to not just ex describe a prehistoric crocodile as a new thing. <laughs> hold on, hold on. So, okay, okay. basically with rising uh, ocean levels, we're going to lose Florida. Rip. Good. I know, I know. But, um, you know, just so think about all that, finny. like, shallow land, like that shallow ocean. You know, would, do you think, like, a croc could, like, adapt to that? Like an oceanic there were, uh, croc. There were oceanic crocodiles. Well, God fucking damn it. We'll make a new uh, one. So Let so me send a picture. Really quick. Um... Uh, uh, the family was known as the Metriorhynchids. I'm going to start were doodling a crocodile. So if you crocodiles guys that later. lost their claws for fins. And they would have had a fluke on the end of their tail. They were dolphins, really. Fluke. <laughs> They're dolphins. Dolphins, uh, but scaly. A, a fluke is that weird fin dolphins have on the end. Ah. It, 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 it's horizontal, right? Or is it vertical? I know there's a difference uh, between... I think it's in, horizontal. In dolphins, it's horizontal. In sharks, it's uh, vertical. Yeah, I remember yeah, not, that I mean, from the movie. Um, Alright, so basically a shark crocodile. Uh, more of a so dolphin crocodile. You'll see uh, when no the image clue. pops in. I, I see the image. Yeah. Uh, lifestyle would have been a lot more like a dolphin. In fact, the family of the... Uh, Mitriorhynchids even had their own killer whale called Dacosaurus. Nice. Daco. Like, I don't just say it's its own killer whale because it's the largest member of the family at about five meters long. Uh, Dacosaurus teeth are built in the same way that killer whale teeth, and they distribute weight the same way that killer whale teeth do. Okay, okay, how about this? How about this? Since, you know, rising sea levels and everything, there's going to be a lot of flooded cities. How about we make a species of croc that is adapted to flooded cities? And like this post of the Honestly, I was going daytime. to go more inland with it. the kids to their oh? school, and he wears whatever well, dads wear. Uh, just because crocodiles need um, a cold, uh, they need a cold enough temperature to gestate their eggs in. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you, with, you don't want fried eggs. Well, um, eggs that gestate at warmer temperatures uh, develop females. So if it's too warm, then all their eggs would hatch females and they wouldn't be able to have a next they'd generation of eggs. If, if the Let's earth see. warmed up, they'd go extinct. Uh, 
crocodiles, the, the way that they build their nests is they're insulated so that the eggs on the innermost part of the nest are warmer and the eggs on the outermost part of the nest are cooler. I see. So I was imagining oh. them going much more inland. Uh, All right. I can, Gosh, I, I can see that. I was, I was thinking about Purosaurus. I was just about to describe Purosaurus to you. Um, should we, which is should another... We just, should we just forgo I, crocs? You cannot do crocodiles here. Anything you'd try to do would just be a normal crocodile from at some point in the fossil record. I mean, if there was just water... if there was Unless we made water, them fly. <laughs> Unless we made them fly. <laughs> oh, you know what? How, how about... Um, how about a more subterranean species? Sub here, Hear me out, hear me out. With the way the current trends are going, um, tropical storms and hurricanes are going to become more violent. So what if it was an adaptation for crocs to go underground? <gasps> we didn't, we didn't drill for a nose. Let's go Animega. <laughs> we're, not, we're not making a Pokemon. <laughs> it would be so cool. We're not making a Pokemon. Okay, okay, so what do we see in animals that dig a lot? Okay. They're normally blind, right? Or they have something covered Well, uh, crocodiles actually do dig. Yeah, they do dig, but not uh, yeah, at the extent more. of, like, mole. Yeah, um, so you might hate me for this, but there is a prehistoric crocodile that predominantly lived in Burroughs. Oh we Lord. don't care! What if it went back there, okay? I'm going to post a picture of it just because I think Marilliasuchus is cute. I'm going to fight you. <laughs> is there a fucking crocodile for everything? Is there a fucking- They haven't flown oh, yet. They haven't no. flown. <laughs> well, you know what, you could- Doc, you want to make a fucking flying croc? Let's make a flying croc. Okay, so <clears throat> you've got water pushing in. We've agreed Florida's wiped out. Yeah. <laughs> but Louisiana's full of sort of thick, swampy areas, almost mangrove-like, correct? Yeah, it, that's going to become salty. What about saltier. crocs? Well, that's exactly. What about crocs? Because, well, uh, mangrove swamps live in estuaries, oh, don't they? Oh, no. <sighs> I... Sorry, sorry, guys, to interrupt you. Just look at how fat his arm is. He's so cute. <laughs> a little chubster. You made him I know, thick. I know. He'd be the opposite of chunky because he'd be flying, right? Well, so... uh, I'm imagining, <laughs> say, you know, we've got swampy uh, trees in sort of a mangrove swamp esque area, and with all of this new warmer water what if another predator had moved in so crocodiles at least one of the ways they adapted was to get out of the water and into the trees oh. so okay so they have to climb like a primate uh, well, maybe not hands. like a primate because having big or sharp squirrel. claws is pretty good in climbing or like a oh, okay. squirrel fine Fuck. yeah <laughs> something like a squirrel Let's see, not necessarily grabbing the trunks in the same way that a, pri a primate does, but just scurrying across it like a squirrel would. Uh, all right, all right. Um, alligators do already have a propensity for some climbing. They're known to climb over chain link fences. Yeah, I I've seen videos of that. They are actually pretty similar okay. just with fur. Well, the first thing I would imagine is that their tails would be less paddle-like and more... Hey, let's wrap around the tree for dear life, <laughs> Mike. More, more prehensile, yes. Yes. Big words. Ubu. Okay. Okay. Uh, you prehensile just means something you can grab with. Oh. Yeah, Mango. You see how the the tail is like a big floppy floppy. Yeah. Instead of that, so think. Long. Instead of that, think monkey. Oh, so so it'd come down and then it would just kind of like spindle. Like less spikes, less yeah, um, chunk. This guy is gonna girth, look so more angry. like it has the ability to wrap around a thing. Okay, so we're we're not doing the flying thing anymore. Uh, no, we're. I guess we're doing an arboreal crocodile. Oh, um, but the flying. Oh, also, thing. Pen, you might have actually been right with more primate like. Uh, Climbing. I'm posting a picture of what a 
it's not an alligator, but a crocodile's hand. Uh, alligator hands are close enough. If you just Google alligator hand, you get a lot of alligator bags is all. Oh, that's saddening. Yeah. Yeah. Outwardly like human hands? Yeah, thumbs I mean... the bottom. They would get thumbs. Well, they already have thumbs. Those thumbs would become more opposable. But, uh, yeah, like, that is... So probably... Creepy, uh, but yeah. Bigger, sharper claws on those main three digits. And then longer, more usable for those two side digits. Okay, so what like do we draw Like, more of our... Like thumb and index finger, and then yeah, the other just three would just look be at your more hand. of a claw. So if he scurries to a tree, what kind of tree would he scurry to? What kind of trees would be in the area? Uh, mangroves. What is a? M- I don't know anything. <laughs> Let me pull up a picture. I, I'm Mangrove. I'm not a botanist, so I don't know. <laughs> oh, neat. So mangroves are a type of tree that live in estuaries, so where rivers meet oceans. Mm, they're very so you're swimming. Not switch. I keep trying to say switch and swap at the same time, and I just say swip all the time. Swip, swap. Uh, so you're swapping from an ecosystem of fresh water to one of uh, brackish ocean water. He's salt right. water. That's what. Brackish, that is the big boy word. So, like these ones. They're very spindly. Yeah, they yeah, are. Very um, thick trees with mostly exposed. Uh oh. Doc? Oh no! What? Uh, In my minute. life? Uh, barely. You should leave and rejoin the cold. That normally helps. Great. Me. Yeah, tr- try leaving and coming back. How would he grapple onto a spindly branch? Or would he be over multiple? Well, I his arms would probably be more muscular. Am I yeah. alive? I yeah. come back to the word muscular. <laughs> Me. You, you're you're yep, you're good. You're good. They're... Um I'm gonna look up a fossil animal just for some internal points of mine. It's not a crocodile, though. It is you not promise? a You promise? Gosh dang it. I can't remember the name of the group. Oh, jeez. I'm gonna text someone really quick. He technically discovered one of the species of them. Alright, so... On accident, he dropped a block, and it broke open, and then they found bones inside of it they hadn't noticed before, and they're like, huh. That's a new species. <laughs> oh, jeez. Huh. That happened. So Gosh. the arms what would definitely. Is... So the arms and legs would definitely be longer, and like, well, definitely the arms. Okay. Um, you think the snout would be shorter? Or yeah, you... definitely, definitely, it would get in the way a lot. Yeah, it, it would. I don't know. You don't know what. If the snout would be shorter, it might end up with something kind of like a things. gavriel. What's a gavriel? <laughs> Uh, they are crocodiles. Oh, Gariel. With Gariel, yes. I do not know why I can never remember that word right. Gariel crocodiles are the ones with a very long snoot. Yeah, and you could use it to grab onto trees and stuff. Well, I wasn't thinking grab onto trees. I was thinking a small, thin snout with needle-like teeth to catch insects out of the air. <gasps> oh, wow. Yeah, I, 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 I can see that. I can see that. I'm mainly basing that off of the early pterosaurs, the ramp that exact type of head shape. You could probably also use it to, like, catch birds. Oh, you know what? You know what? If it uses as camouflage, it'd be a great ambush predator. Oh, so he camouflages with the trees. Yeah. Crocodiles do already. Crocodiles and alligators do already kind of make themselves look like logs. Yeah, but we're talking yeah. about an arboreal species, so it would wouldn't look like a log. It would yeah. Look like... Well, I'm just saying like it's not out of the range if they were to continue the type of camouflage they're already doing. Just go from making themselves look like a dead log to making themselves look like part of a brain. 
Uh, Access says, well, crocodiles survive because of the adaptability of their diet. Any major changes would come from mutations occurring for their dentition. Yeah. Like, uh, gharial crocodiles, I believe, are uh, adapted to eat fishes. Like, they... Yeah. Uh, gharials, they're a uh... They have snouts like that, and their snouts are so thin so that they can move them through the water faster. Yeah. Um, would... And you see the same thing in animals that eat a lot of insects. Yeah, like uh, anteaters. Or have you ever seen a hummingbird's mouth? Yes, I've seen a hummingbird's mouth. Hi, Dashi, what's up? I'm going to post one just so that the Please. audience can see it. Also me. So you think he'd have a long, 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 thin snout instead of the big bulky one? Maybe not super long, but a good length of skinny snout. Okay, we can skinny put that snoot. in. But thicker beak slash jaw are usually used to crush stuff. Well, yeah, but we're talking about, like, in this hypothetical scenario, I would imagine small birds would be readily available. He might have not been here when we explained the kind of situation oh, that that's is... going on, so... Yeah, right. we're uh, designing a little uh, crocodile who's <laughs> being just, pushed out of the water like old up man. into the trees. He looks like an I old noticed man. you made his head big. That's uh, that's usually a trait and of a very... human-like. Yeah, well, it's beyond that, it's also like... That's also a sign of like a highly intelligent species. So I I would imagine that maybe moving into the trees, like, oh, now they have to work with like they become a well, bird. Uh, crocodiles exhibit uh, debatable tool use in nature. Really? I, yeah, I knew that was prominent with uh, like penguins and uh, not penguins. Jesus Christ, dolphins. Oh, and, I love penguins. penguins. Yeah, dolphins um, and uh, chimpanzees and everything, but I, it's it's very debatable. But there is possible times where um, crocodiles use bait to catch things. I'm loving the idea of the big hummingbird mouth. I don't um, know if that's what you meant me to do, but like I, I I like the little hooks on the end. I feel like that would be super useful. Yeah, I I, I kind of like that. Hmm. It is very hummingbird-like. Actually, yeah, no, that that would work for this animal. What would his eyes be like? Um, big and pointed to the sides. Yeah, yeah. Actually, let me try to find a good picture of a baby crocodile. Oh, he's so afraid! I'm looking because at baby crocodiles eat a lot of insects as well. So yeah, if I draw something and you guys are like, hmm, I don't- that, actually, we can talk about that. Please, please do bring it up, and then we can, like, discuss, and like- Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Just, like, don't worry, like, so, like you're yeah. doing a great job so far. Oh no, I totally- yeah. yeah. I, I just no really wanna really think of, like, conversations oh. we can have about things that- I would add. say, maybe give him a bit more of a neck. Crocodiles have long necks <laughs> when you actually get down to it. Oh. Ah. Yeah, see, I only have, like, one view, uh, so I wouldn't know that. Let's see. The uh, the horn dinosaurs, like, triceratops are the same way. You don't big their neck is because your eyes are so focused on their, their mouth. Send me a baby crocodile. I'm... It is loading currently. Send it faster. I will try. Oh, God. Oh! <gasps> Oh I can hear that photo. I can fucking hear it that. Sounds like a laser. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. Look at this. Mango, that have is... you ever have you ever heard uh baby crocs? No. They sound like lasers. They sound oh. like lasers from like Star Wars. Yeah, they make these really high pitched chirping noises oh, to basically oh, tell oh, adults, oh. hey, come That's help so me. Cute. Pay attention to me. <laughs> You guys Make sure like Big Thing doesn't them. eat me. Oh, I'm gonna give him like a rainbow coming out of his mouth. I feel like that's fitting. I feel like it would lose a lot of the osteoderms, the, the bony scales in their back, though. 
Yeah, those okay. would carry a lot of weights. Yeah. Um, Look at this baby. <laughs> okay. So Exus redeemed a highlight message. Yoshi. Yoshi. So true. Yoshi. Nice. This is very true. Oh, you're right. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think that's excess golem. You're absolutely right. Uh, thicker beaks less jaws are usually used to crush stuff. Things like parrots that have very short but very broad beaks break open walnuts. And then there's the animal Purosaurus, which it's a big crocodile, and its head is shaped like a shoebox, and it was eating giant turtles. So would you say it would have a bigger eye or smaller? Bigger. <laughs> like, uh, like the baby? Typically... Okay, so typically there is a trend in the animal kingdom. Uh, animals with bigger eyes that are closer to the front of their heads are typically going to be your predators. And animals with smaller eyes, um, usually to the side, are going to be either prey animals or scavengers. For uh, this thing that is uh, catching small insects, it's going to want, like Penn said, nice big eyes at the front of its head. Because yeah. if it's catching um, insects, it's going to need to not only see the insect, but judge how far away the insect is. So it's... depth perception will be very important. Fun fact, it's also why we, uh, you know, it's why we're set up the way we are. Because, you know, large eyes, front of our head. It's also mm. why we find some animals cute. Because Yee. they share that trait with us. Round eyes. By the way, Large just saying, this is going to look like a train wreck. <laughs> it's alright. This, this dude is going to be a train wreck, but I'm okay with that. So he'd be more like a big lizard with like less spines, a longer neck. Yeah, uh, you're going to want to get rid of, uh, if you're a running climbing thing, you're going to want to get rid of a lot of weight. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um... And volume, he'd want to sleek out a bunch, as one of the uh, commenters in stream had pointed out. Yeah, you, 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 usually a chonky squirrel ain't one that's going to last long. No. Yeah. How big would this boy be? I'm imagining a gray squirrel in size. He'd be tiny! Oh, Either that or... He's a baby. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how big these trees get, but if this is what he's going to be climbing on, then you know he's got you know he's got to fit the tree. Yeah, he's got to fit the tree. How long would his stomach oh. region be? Um, would his legs start like here or like lower? Or the size of Lemurians? Yeah, I, I could see like a lemur-ish animal. There was side note, and then we'll get to the question side about note. legs. Uh, side note, there was a lemur that was convergently evolved with ground sloths and was like the size of a gorilla. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. It's awesome. Okay, so legs, that is an interesting one because it seems like with animals that are doing this, they either get long bodies that they can wrap around things or they get nice short bodies so that they can use their legs and their arms on the same thing. Yeah. Well, given this what we're working with, we pretty much, like, I don't know, croc bodies seem pretty long, with, you know, teeny oh, okay. tiny little limbs. So, I would imagine... They're, they're decently long, yes. So, I would imagine that they would get, you know, somewhat of a longer body, but keep the uh, muscular legs... Reminding me of Salazzle. Oh, don't remind me of Salazzle. Salazzle? <laughs> don't remind me of Salazzle. Is that a Pokemans? It, it not only is it a Pokemans, it is the scaly bait Pokemans. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was Dratini. That was what? I thought that was Dratini. I, I don't... Dratini. Uh, here... I will post it in the thing. I know nothing about. I Pokemon. know what Slazzle is. I just feign ignorance. That's Slazzle. Wait, is that Dratini? Never mind. I was trying to make a joke and I uh, didn't. Dratini. 
Yeah, Dracini is the little the wrong like Pokemon. Sperm dragon snake. I named the wrong Pokemon. I think oh, I was thinking okay. about what what Dratini evolves into. Oh, Dragon Ant? Yes. I don't think a lot of people would fap to Dragon Air. That was the the reason I said it. Mm. I don't know. Some like them thick, boy. No, no, that's Dragonite. Is that Dra- I am O for O with the Pokemans today. <laughs> there, there's Dratini, which is the little the little noodle, the little worm noodle, dragon noodle. There's Dragon Air, which is the the long, elegant dragon snake. Then there's Dragonite, which is the chunky boy that has. Yeah, the... Dragonite. Dragonite was the end goal with that. Yeah. We got there in the end. It only took a journey, a few minutes, and the help of stream chat. We went to Broken Florida and back. But we got there. Oh, he probably wouldn't have webs on his fingers anymore. Or his toes. Yeah, Yeah, because he'd be, like, out of water more, right? Yeah. Unless he needs to, like, quickly get back into water. Oh, his little feet. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm throwing a wrench at things. I'm just like, oh, wait a second. Go- what if... Godra? Are you Godra? talking about Ghidorah? Oh no no Ghidorah no! Ghidorah is no. not a Pokemon. That's from Godzilla. No no no! There, there's Gudra. Uh, it basically it's a slime dragon. Ew. So so okay. I've learned something from this drawing, and that's that I shouldn't draw a concept of a thing while it's doing something like this. Because <laughs> I'm having to morph the trees with the thing, and then I'm morphing the thing more, and then I have to morph the tree. <laughs> I'm kind of <laughs> liking the way the wood is warping though. Big crisis. Though. Yeah, it does. It does look like uh, the trees. It does. It does look. Like... It, it feels like a mangrove. Yeah. I mean, I'll put like a little thing coming out here, so it's kind of in front. He's kind of intertwined between everything. He's got his little feet. Oh, his little feet. <laughs> I like King Ghidorah though. You know, just because now I remember him, he's pretty cool. Oh, are we talking Pokemon now? No. 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 Oh, okay. King Ghidorah is a Daikaiju. A what? Uh, gosh dang it. <laughs> I feel like the friends made me say Daikaiju. He's a giant monster from Japanese oh, movie. I've never seen... I've never heard of... <laughs> okay, his bottom leg is way too small. I mean, we could just say it's wrapped around the that branch, so... Oh, it is wrapped around the branch, but it just feels kind of weird where it's coming from. Let's see. Ah. And his stomach. I don't know what to do with his stomach. You would want to thicken his tail out quite a bit. Um, okay. While he's I not using his tail as a thick paddle, the stomach. muscles that move the legs anchor in the tail. Yeah. Yeah, if there's anything wrong, though, it's his crocodiles. Would it be able to thin out abruptly after the muscles are, like, over? Hmm. Or would it just go gen- slowly? It's actually interesting trying to think about how it would adapt from a modern crocodilian tail into a, yeah, an arboreal one. Or, obviously it would work hold on, muscles, hold on. I don't, I don't want to throw a wrench in thing. I just want to pose an idea. I'm I just want to pose an idea. If and you're going to make me cry. I'm sorry... <laughs> I'm already it just it, it it already it just came to me. I'm sorry, but hear me out. What if? Ow, gosh, you no. Know, what if the legs became vestigial? What is a vestigial? I almost it means they're inside the body, but not uh, pronounced. Like no, or you know, a body part that's no longer used. Um, oh, snakes, a lot of snakes there. still have their back legs. They're just two little, uh, like, spurs oh on God. their, uh, bodies that have claws on the end of them. Uh, whales still have their back legs. They have, a a femur and then a, uh, fibula. Or no, uh, it's the tibia. Same with our appendix. Um, well, no, actually, that's been proven to 
uh, uh, a vestigial structure is fancy evolution talk for something that is Look going away but doesn't currently have a purpose. Look at his little feet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is that comparable to our tailbone? Uh, I think our tailbone actually plays a part in our the way we balance when we sit it, on our ass. It it has to do with muscle attachments, but yeah. comparing our tails to our relatives' tails is the, the right idea. Uh, so what would happen? I, what would happen to its feet? Would it just have like a lump here, or like? Let me try to find a picture of what a whale's back legs are like. <laughs> Oh. Sorry, you get me to stream at you at th with you at three a.m. I'm gonna <laughs> be a little weird, quirky. If, if we need, if we need to stop, uh, you know, okay, I oh, no, just I'm posted a, a picture I'm in great. chat uh, of what happened to whales evolutionarily. Uh, mm -hmm. A good uh, to example. Their back legs. So like dew claws and traps generally. It would make sense too. Hello, shark geek. How's it going? Uh, what about genitals? Oh, Trump's. I thought he said shark genitals, and I was like, what? No, no I'm, shark, I'm no, like shark genitals work. Shark, I'm, I'm fairly certain genitals. shark genitals work. So, anyway, Shark if... Geek, welcome to, welcome, to the, uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, this is the guy from uh, Shark Stewards. And, nice. Um, yeah. So, uh, but so yeah, there's a, a picture there showing that? off uh, evolution from uh, early whales to, or the ancestor of whales to what we have now. That's right. cool. Another They've still got the ilia crest, and that little lip, like the round bean-shaped thing on that bone, that is the femur. So that's the thigh bone. Oh, that's Ron, bizarre. shut the hell up. Love you. Yeah. From Lewis at is that Lucy? Yep. Yep, that makes sense. So, do you think that he'd get more fish-like then? Like, his, because the world would be covered in water if we go with the whole trends and whatever. If he'd become more fish-like? Um, Especially if he's lost his legs. Like, he'd still be able to cling, but maybe he'd he'd be able to swim a lot better. Like, a kind of like a light fin or something. somewhere. That would be interesting, an animal that is... Uh aquatic and arboreal instead of like because... aquatic and land dwelling or land dwelling and yeah, arboreal because if there's not yeah. much land left he's gonna turn into something and he's gonna swim more and sure he can have his little grabby hands for the for the trees hiding and stuff but like i don't know would he, would he have like a fin going down his spine or would his tail have like that that thing that's on like dolphin tails that you mentioned earlier yeah fluke a fluke. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna... uh, I don't think it would oh, be boy. like um, fish fins, like how it have you know the the race. Oh, Dazzy! I'm sorry, my cat is deciding to attack my foot for Throw whatever reason. He's being very bad. Does he pay rent? Um, I think um, what Penn was trying to get at before he got mauled was sort of the the thin struts you see through fish fins. Uh, struts. Okay, so you know what I'm like. I have no idea if that's what Finn was or Pen was getting at. I just, What's just Finn? Shoot in the dark. How do so I want to put this? Look, like you know how brain fish brain. fins are like fans. Yeah. Except for like coelacanths. Um, yeah, I don't think it would be like that for crocs. I think it would be yeah. more like you see how there's like these blades jutting out of the tail at the end. Oh like, yeah, kind of like knives. Like I think it'd be more like that, more like a dragon um, spines or something like that. But they yeah, those are like uh, those structures. Bit, they're right? called osteoderm. It literally means bone skin. They're a type of scale that hardens into bone as the animal ages. Mm. All right, uh, I, I got new people watching. I should probably fill a little bit more. What's going on? So uh, I got speculative evolution. Right, I got Doc here. Doc, say hi. Hi. I got Mango. Mango, say hi. Hi. All right, Doc here. He knows a bunch about paleontology. Mango's really an artist. Smart. We're going off on speculative Barely. biology or speculative evolution or whatever. Um, and we're making up weird species that could hypothetically work in a possible universe. We're going off of the idea of, hey, what if humans suddenly disappeared and... Um, 
but current trends that we are seeing today that the planet is undergoing continue the way they are going. So we are thinking, okay, higher uh, sea levels, uh, warmer temperatures, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right, I think I think we're good. Yeah. Um. So, do you think that these like scales going along his back would be able to soften a bit and be more functional as like kind of like swimming wise? Well, they they wouldn't actually need to soften. What might happen is they get thinner, or not thinner, but I guess. Yeah, so thinner would make them softer, maybe. Well, no, I'm I'm thinking the distance from the front of the fin to the back of the fin. They'd get shorter. That's the word. Oh, okay. Um, I was so they could have more of them on the more. tail, so that like, there would be more uh, movement there. So, so more on the tail, less on the back. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, welcome everyone who's new. <laughs> Yes, sort of a future-proof so, amphibian. It's just based on a crocodile instead of amphibians, because those guys are just screwed. Oh yeah, amphibians are screwed. Not to get more. pessimistic, you know, Dashi. F in the chat. They've had a For good amphibians. run of like 400 million years. Yet somehow... Time the... to put them out of their misery. <laughs> Yet somehow pests like gnats and fleas still manage to stick around. They're doing something right. You can't be mad at them for living. By the way, after this, we definitely gotta try uh, insects. Oh, yes. Oh, gosh. So, so what like, I'm no entomologist, so but like... Can you get weirder than insects already are? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But like, we can at least oh. try. Darn, I can't remember the uh, name of it, but there was that I found out about uh, in... in during the Halloween season, our uh, museum does the carnivore carnival. And we get to talk a lot more about more gruesome stuff. Apparently, there was a species of carnivorous cockroach. Oh, fun. Like, it would catch small lizards and other bugs and eat them. It just looks like a wasp, because that's the best shape for a predatory insect. But <laughs> it's a member of the cockroach family. Nice. I'm going to give them little stumpy feet. <laughs> little stumpy feet. Look at his little stumps. There we go, because they're kind of working their way out, but they're still kind of there. Um. Okay, alright. I mean, that'll work. I mean, that's how, uh, like, we Evolution. get vestigial body gradual. parts. Like, you know, we, 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 you see, they just get tinier and tinier until they just don't become noticeable. I think, um, man, one of the coolest things about evolution is when things lose a feature evolution early, and then want to get it back. Because it, for whatever reason, it seems like uh, animals can't just re-evolve something. Uh -huh. If you've lost a structure, you can't get it back. It's gone. That's uh -huh. um, it, It's really hard to press the undo button. Now, if it's something like a soft tissue structure, then it's really easy. But like teeth, so many animals have lost teeth after getting them and then wanted teeth back because okay. teeth are super useful. Yeah. Um, so that's why hummingbirds, all those uh, sharp bits in that hummingbird beak I posted, uh, those yeah. aren't teeth, that's just the shape of the beak. Ah, that's neat. Uh, the beak just grows like that. Because they need teeth to help them catch insects, but they can't grow teeth because they lost that ability spitballing 105 million years ago. Dude, no, insects never like ceased to make me say how in the actual fuck would you evolve that trait? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Insects are on a whole nother level. Like Especially like parasitoids. Like things that reproduce through uh, laying their eggs inside of other animals. Mm. Yeah. Like how did the, the tarantula hawk wasp evolve down the line of, oh, if I paralyze things and then lay my eggs inside of them, when they hatch, they can eat its still alive body. Oh my god. How about thinning down its head so that it's more streamlined for in the water? Quicker to get away and stuff. My connection has died to the point where I can no longer make out what the picture uh, is. Yeah, same oh, here. I'm sorry, I can leave and rejoin. Sorry. Yeah, get, yeah try that. 
Be good. That might that might make it better, yeah. There we go. Um, I think that head looks slim enough. Yeah, yeah I, I, think I already we're good. I already slimmed it down. It was it was different before. It was like that before. But I was oh, thinking yeah. just slimming it down to this would make it more streamlined and wetter. You might want to build it up just a bit more behind the eyes, maybe not with structure, but kind of like conveying a ridge there. Like those Wasa only breed scythe figs. What the fuck? Yeah, I know. Uh, God, what else is there? Yeah, if I, if, I kick the, if I kick the screen chair and force it to do better, just let me know when it gets bad. All right. Okay. Um. Or, you know, continuing along the lines of parasitoids, there's that uh, wasp species that stings caterpillars, lays its mm -hmm. eggs inside of them, and the caterpillar will, like, take care of the eggs. Oh, yeah, yeah, I heard about that. Uh, How do you evolve a mind control drug? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna just real quick line this a bit better, because it's very messy. Or like how most insects are built to a point where they will deject or eject their own limbs to get out of problems. <laughs> like lizards do that with their tails, but pretty much every arthropod does it. Also, can I just say that before this stream, the only thing that I've really ever thought about or discussed about evolution is my granddad thinking he's super deep and being like one day humans are going to evolve without feet because of how lazy they are and I'm like uh... <laughs> so this is a breath of fresh air yeah no that's yeah, not no. how that would work no there would have to be an advantage to not yeah, having feet because and also, Otherwise, if you're interested in that, though, there is a nice, whimsical book uh, called Doug Dixon's Man. Man After Man. Oh, yeah, oh, no. Man After Man might be. It's such a, a fun, lighthearted read. Oh, God. Is it about yeah. humans eventually becoming, like, stumps? <laughs> no. No, it's not okay. Wally. -E. No, no, they oh, don't no. get bigger and fatter. They just turn into... Monsters. Monsters. Oh, Have no. you seen that meme of it's like a big yeti with a weird monster on its back and it says season's greetings no well if anyone in the chat has seen the season's greetings meme uh, then that is from a Dougal dixon book i'm going to find it you 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 just you're just spurring confusion look i'm not confused i I'm swear so people have seen it oh no not you i, I mean i mean in chat what's going on uh, Doc's description of a meme is, uh, spurring confusion. It's a, it's a meme! It's, it's uh, a meme doc... The dank meme How do you guys think that humans are going to evolve? It's a meme well, me well, This is what's called a tundra dweller and a parasite. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, The that original one. picture I mean... did not have the text Season's Greetings on it, I want to point out. I <laughs> Anyway, um, this for oh how my humans God. evolved. Um, this is another holiday card. Oh let's see, let's see real quick. Taken Just from the, the same. Is more unsettling. Oh Lord. What is this stream? You you need to show them on stream. Okay, it's up. Oh, I'm showing them. I'm, 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 I just have like the stream chat up. Like I have. Oh, you, you're back to being indecipherable. Okay. Uh, sorry again. No, well, damn no, it! I mean, Someone we... gifted me nitro, fam. My stream quality should be epic. I'll lower the frame rate. Shit. Since Shit. you won't really need that. Oh, that's my whole screen. <laughs> the infinite recursion. Oh no, it's oh, Russell's no, it's paradox. Russell's paradox. Oh, I'm hearing oh, echo. I'm hearing echo. Sorry, 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 echo. sorry, sorry. Oh my god. I didn't god. hear any echo. Dang, I'm upset. Anyway, um, humans have kind of we we've kind of removed ourselves from evolution because we have allowed. Yeah, you know, we're not. Uh, we're not actually, I well, think you'll find is much more likely to reproduce than the sub eight male. We 
betas, as we like to call ourselves, uh, have been removed from the gene pool by society's impossible standards. Oof. Don't, uh, oof. Can I continue? Can someone please pick up that that was a joke and I don't believe that? Yeah, garbage? yeah we picked up Thank that you. was a joke. Thank you. Okay. I'm done. We, I'm, we, I'm gonna we, have to we take see a that it was a joke. That. You know what? I give you a small golf clap just for the attempt. Thank you. Thank all you. Right. So that's all you get. It's good to appreciate that. effort, at but least. Any, but anyway, um, we're not really struggling for survival. In case you haven't noticed, there's over 7 billion of us. Um, you know, I think we're doing but pretty isn't well. It a, isn't it a bit of a problem that over time, less and less, we're not, we, we, we don't need to do as much as we did before? I'm sorry, what? Like, I don't know, just people are, I don't know, well, life is we, we are quicker than people. Isn't well, that going to have an impact? Well, we are changing. We, I, I, we are changing, but it's not based on survival. It's yeah. not based on anything. It's it's based Technology. on purely subjective uh, desire. You know, su- subjective traits like what it's... you find like okay, what you would find attractive in a partner is completely up to you. It's not really like you could trace it back to some biological. Um, There's uh, some Freudian origin. shit you could argue with, yeah. Oh, yeah, there is some Freudian shit out. you can argue, but overall, like, there's no reason to like what you like anymore. Like, like there's the you know idea of most men are attracted to women with big hips because that is a sign for good chi- ability to bear children. And then there's people who are into inflation. Not throwing any shade, but that has no bearing on how good you are at surviving. Yeah, and then there are people who are like, there are men who are into um, women with small tits. Like, that's not going to be helpful. They're called called men of uh, education. Ron. (laughs) Oh, God. I didn't say anything. And then, of course, there's other, you know, sorts of things. Like, um, you know, you can like somebody, like, you can find a trait attractive that is completely counterintuitive to um, survival, such as, um, like, depression is a thing. Mostly because, like, back in the day, people, those people were seen as, you know, deep and emotional, which they were. But that was seen as a favorable trait, and now we're all sad fucks. No. I mean, I think there's a lot more to causing people to be sad now. Like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's more than that, but, like, a lot of it is genetic, and we can trace it back to that. So, no. we have separated also, yes, so, some, uh, I was trying to think of the word culture, but I could not remember the yes. word culture, so I said education. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I wanted to say man of culture, but then I was like, hmm. Yeah, we we don't want to. I have forgot. I forget so many words. It is it is crazy. You need a save room for all the Latin. It's understandable. Oh man, and like when there's new stuff, it's the worst. You there was a new Latin. dinosaur announced today. Uh, Abdurinus, I think. Ooh. No idea. Can't remember its name. I haven't taken weeks to drill it in. Oh, God. oh fucking hell. Like, someone tried to tell me about a new dinosaur the other day, Valabona Venetrix, and I was like, okay, I know that's not new, because I had time to memorize Valabona Venetrix. How do you... But anyway, um, back to what I was saying. Uh, as for how humans will go, um, well, to say that there are traits that are universally unfavorable, um, well, yeah, I, I think that we could honestly say that. Like, I don't think... Like, typically... Like, there are trends that we can't follow for beauty, even though there are outliers. Um, For example, we find a symmetrical face um, more appealing than an asymmetrical face. It won't matter because it will be all identical generations anyway. Fucking hell, who said that? Shark Geek. Oh my god. With a laughing face, too. Are you okay, Shark Geek? Shark Geek is based. 
he sees through this society's crud. He can cut through it all and see the core. Yeah. This shit's deep. Anyway, um, so yeah, there, there are we, traits that we can say are pretty much universally seen uh, as desirable. And there are obviously, uh, you know, there are traits that we can see that are, you know, universally undesirable. And, um, be, the, essentially the, the point is we have removed ourselves from survival of the fittest. Yes, yeah. yes, that's that's the, that's the point I'm trying to drive home. Because if your kid, you know, isn't super fit, it doesn't matter. We don't have to chase down woolly rhinos and club them to death to eat anymore. Yeah, we if came up with kid's farming. Not super smart. We live in it a society. doesn't matter because we don't have saber toothed cats hunting us constantly. That if you don't notice, we'll just drag you up a tree and eat you. Or, or you know. To take it to an even more, you know, extreme level, let's say your kid is, like, uh, low-functioning autistic, or, say, has, like, uh, some sort of, like, cerebral palsy or something, like, you wouldn't survive in the fucking wild. Yeah. There's no, there's no fucking way. But in the society that we have set up, because we recognize that, oh, uh, we tend to live better and live longer and generally be happier if we work together. Um, you know, it allows these, I, I don't want to say flaws, but it allows these uh, individuals with these highly undesirable traits in a term of... Uh, yeah, yeah, if you want to talk about things that don't feel like a mind field, survivability sense. Yeah, survivability. That's what I was. That's what I meant to say. That's what yeah. I meant to say. But you can also talk about things like plastic surgery. So if someone has undesirable f- features on their space, sure, it's not the same as someone who is unable to live normally. But like you know, that's yeah. I I think one of the. Uh really interesting concept sort of just because you mentioned like uh, autistic individuals um not quite the same but similar uh there's a theory going around that adhd might be a survival adaptation oh yes yes i i have heard of that um um, for for those who don't know if i if i can uh um, the idea is that uh people with adhd have a hard time focusing on one thing unless it interests them. So if you're just walking around in the woods, your focus is kind of bouncing around so you're able to pay attention to everything going around you, more so than someone who is just scanning for red berries to eat. And then once you find something that catches your interest, because the hyper-focus is just as much a symptom of ADHD as it is autism, I don't know why it isn't thought of as one, um... The, the hyper-focus then comes into, oh, there's a big cat there. I better pay attention to where it is and what it is doing at all times so that it doesn't sneak up and eat me. I know that or, feeling. Oh, I'm being attacked by a small cat. Oh, there's berries over there. I better pay attention to where those berries are and learn about uh, what they're like, how they're growing, so that if I notice other plants like what is growing around those berries, I know that might mean there's more berries in the area with these this kind of plant. Yeah, and... Those kind of, like, that kind of uh, mindset, I guess, or that kind of, like, mode of thinking um, can can be helpful. However, yeah, uh, when I... just however, a theory we really have no idea if that's where ADHD yeah, but, comes from. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I also heard a theory that, like, autism is caused by, caused by Neanderthal DNA, so... Yeah... There are traits caused by Neanderthal DNA. Uh, diabetes is more prevalent in those with a higher percentage of Neanderthal DNA, and it's an adaptation mm-hmm. that Neanderthals had for um, cold survivability. Huh. Huh. Um, really high that. levels of blood sugar makes it so that your bloods and then other uh, fluids in your body have a lower freezing point, so you're less likely to get frostbite. That's cool. neat. Um, but, I mean, things like autism... Though. There's no, at least I haven't seen any compelling evidence of a correlation between predominantly European and Northern European populations having more cases of diagnosed. Space, uh, 
basically from what I Actually, heard, so um, the idea is based on like racial demographics. Like most of people on the spectrum are white. Uh, then I think it's black and then like Asian uh, and then you get like Native Americans, Native South Americans and Aborigines. I'd, but that might, yeah. that might, that, that variation might be caused by where people are geographically, if, if their country is developed enough to diagnose them with autism, because like, you know. That is very yeah. much a thing with the whole uh, vaccines cause autism. It, yeah. No, it's not that more kids are getting vaccinated and more kids are getting autism. It's that more, more kids are, are getting vaccinated and we're learning more about what autism is. Yeah. Um, How the fuck do we get on this topic? Uh, we're just talking about about different evolution. ways that things can Evolution change, and yeah. autism, apparently. Um, yeah, I, what, what I'd really like to see is someone trying to break down sort of what... Uh, benefit there would be for that to be a solely neanderthal trait and I, why I don't early know. Ho- and why uh homo sapien sapien wouldn't have had that naturally because homo sapien sapien doesn't have the low or the high blood sugar trait of diabetes because we didn't live in the same arctic climates that neanderthalensis did i don't know I, I so if not, no. one thing, because I have been very like, it's weird to think about it as not paleontology people, but there is some radical schools of thought within paleontology. Radical, dude. And I have been oh, very, very charged against most of it. So I, I am a, a, a just a stick in the mud when it comes to uh, uh, methodology. Japanosaurs. Those are the monkey lizards I was trying to think of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. Well, now we got another monkey lizard. Um, no, or I I was Naga I tried to think lizard. of it earlier, and all I did was I texted my friend, "Hey, what monkey lizard be?" <laughs> oh lord! And he just now got back to me with Japanosaurs. Japanosaurs look like a screwed up reconstruction. Huh. Like, they've got prehensile tails with hooks on the end of them. That's cool. What is... <laughs> Imagine if they started fishing with those. The intelligence fuck. I'd be scared. Oh, goodness. Yeah. What colors? Would oh, we go no, for muddy, muddy colors, right? a mistake. Right? I tried to um, upload a picture on my, my PC instead of my phone. Well, do you want to color this, or do you want to move on to the next? Because we've been going we can, on for like two can, hours. Yeah, we can. We can. Yeah, we can. We can move on. Like to you the can next. just say that as black and white. I think. I think I'm good with. Like, I'm happy yeah, with that. Doc, you got anything else to add? I love it. Aww, All right. Bless you. Can I very quickly post a picture one. of a Japanosaur? Because I'm so yeah. excited. I just got to know what Go they are ahead. again. Go ahead. Look, they're freaky. Look at this boy. This is by an artist, Josh Cotton. He's one of my uh, amigos that I work with. Wow. You work Weird. with people? That's so good. Yeah, Josh Cotton is our uh, on-staff paleo artist for the museum. Wow. So his job is to draw this stuff. That's so cool. All right. Next up, I want to do an insect species. Because okay, okay. we're going to get... Because this is just gonna be fucking weird <laughs> okay so again what are we starting with uh, no uh, not what where where, where? Are we starting? we've oh done God. the oceans we've southern north the america swamps <laughs> what swamps <laughs> is it well, the same swamps that our little uh, croc is living in yeah or i guess marshes or flooded forests what does well, he... i was just mainly asking for area so that we know what species live there to begin with well i think i I, let's let's go back to uh what we're what what we're going to face so rising sea levels we got increase in temperature there's Uh, humidity would be much higher with higher sea levels oh yeah humidity would be much higher um 
God. Maybe it's not yeah, it's a... really... Just while you're thinking of that, I just want to say it. at one point during the Cretaceous period, so the end of the time of the dinosaurs, the Midwestern, not the Midwestern, the uh, Great Plains of the United States was covered up by a shallow ocean. Yes, yeah. That, that... And because of that, areas like southern Utah and Nevada, which are now very, very barren deserts, were lush, almost jungle-like environments. Yes, uh, that's also why we find uh, shark, fo- like shark teeth fossils, like uh, Helicoprion, uh, in Utah. Yeah, um, Idaho has a ton of good um, Helicoprion fossils. Uh, Idaho Virtualization Laboratories does a lot of work with that. I just got to talk to them a few weeks ago uh, uh, about uh, some of their stuff. Might want to so post a reference for Helicoprion for Mango. I'm. Oh, gosh. Let me find one. Um, Okay, so imagine a shark, and now instead of teeth, give it a buzzsaw. Yeah, that's pretty much Hello, Brian. Um, But Idaho Virtualization Laboratories, they do a lot of work and then scan it into computers so that you can 3D print what they've worked on. Wow. And I'm so excited because our institution is getting a 3D printer soon. And oh, there's so much stuff I'm going to make them print. Like Idaho Virtualization Labs has a uh, American lion skull, and I never realized they were that big and terrifying until I held one, and it put the fear of God into me. And why was, like, why do all the most badass animals fucking die? Wow. Yep, yeah, that's that Helicoprion. Well, crocodiles have never died. <laughs> Touche, good sir. Touche. It does seem to take a lot to kill a crocodile. Yeah, um, Helicoprion, they were specialized in eating shellfish, so having all their tooth, all their teeth in one row like that would make it so that they could have a higher pressure of bite. Just like the difference between pinching and holding something, a pinch might have less strength, but because it's focused on a much smaller point, it hurts more. Sometimes my friends will ask strangers at bars to get me to identify random pictures of sharks. Two out of three times people pick Helicoprion first. Mass extinction, what's that? Crocs. <laughs> now I kind of want to try that. What is that? Well, it's their time. So so where are we starting for the next one? So I'm uh, just gonna keep do, do we even want to try on. insects? Because I feel do like... We? I, I feel like it would crazy. have the same problem that I was kind of having with Crocs before, where it's just name something weird, insects have probably already done it. <laughs> insects have done it. <laughs> Been there, there done so. that. Alright, alright, so let's move on. Yeah, so just throw something at me and I'll stop doodling. Okay, Doc. Doc. Let's I was thinking try... it might be interesting. No, no, you, you give your thing. You give your thing. I was going to say, let's do a challenge, Doc. Let's do a fucking challenge. What the let's fuck see is if we challenge, bro? I'm the artist here. No, 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 no. A challenge for for us, for you, it's just uh, I'm gonna draw cry. and try to keep up. Okay. I mean, for the drawing, it'll probably be just as obtuse as all the other drawing has been. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, I love this. Let's boy. try to do the impossible okay. and make an amphibian. That will survive the apocalypse. Oh my god. Okay, give me a base. <laughs> give me okay, a base thing that we're working so on. I, Probably a salamander. I was gonna go with, <gasps> um... Shit, what, what's it called? Um... God, what, 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 uh, anyway, they're known as penis snakes. <laughs> they oh, are... I was just thinking, um... Explain your explain your methodology or your thought. Your thought. Okay, so they're they're called penis snakes. Uh, colloquially, I forget the I'm not name. Do it. Google that. <sighs> no. Just just see what happens. Just see what happens. Please, no. Picture a uh, picture. Okay, picture like an annelid. Picture but... a penis, and make it slimy, oh, and no. give it eyes. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> It's Doc. circumcised, by the way. Doc. <laughs> Doc. 
<laughs> That's the best description possible. That's the best description of a penis snake. Or like a weird uh I don't want to look this white up. sausage. Doc, I don't want to look it up. Can, can you look up the real name, please? This is I'm not what incognito look up mode penis. is for. Googling I'm, I'm live animals, streaming. I'm look streaming. At. I guess it could go to like technical <laughs> You know what you're talking about. Go do it. Hold on. Hold on. I'm oh, going to cry. <laughs> that is a uh, snake penis. Wow. Cassillian. That's that's the word. Cassillian. Okay. What does that we'll mean? Will Twitch ban you if we post pictures of this thing? Probably. So maybe not. Uh. Let <laughs> maybe let's choose a salamander. <laughs> I thought the salamander would be fun. A cassillion. Uh, no, salamanders we'll can fine. survive forest fires, dude. That's I think fun. we'll be fine. They look like earthworms with Do eyes. Do they though? Do they though? Yes! Oh they God, look like guys. earthworms with eyes. Like, look at that. What do we do with that? What are we going to do with that? <laughs> well, I don't know. I think I'll be fine. I got, listen, I got away. It's just a fish. It's not a fish. It's an amphibian. I, it's just an amphibian, then. <laughs> it looks like an annelid. Hey, yo, okay. Twitch chat, I swear this is an amphibian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, dude! You know what that—that that looks That's like the fucking terrible. tongue from a graboid. Oh my Maybe. god! Oh my god! It, it looks you, like a graboid tongue. It does look like a graboid tongue. Mango, you have no idea what we're talking about, do you? No. When do I? Google ass blaster. It'll explain. No, we're not. No, do not Google ass blaster. <laughs> Pen noses, I'm a fucking baby. Okay, No, Ass so Blaster is the... a thing from the movie that we were just referencing. Okay, okay, oh, I'll, I'll give you the short and sweet version of it. So back in the day, back in the 90s, the I was on a very famous TV show. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Oh, were you talking about the... Oh my gosh. So back in the 90s, um, there was a, there was a movie called Tremors. Greatest movie oh, ever made. Starring, that. you've heard of it? Yeah, I've watched it. Okay, well, that looks like a graboid target. tongue. In, oh, like, Tremors 2 and 3, the graboids could detach their tongues. It was part of their oh, life cycle. I know what you're on about now. I just can't remember, because it's been years since I saw the yeah, movie. Yeah, the, the midpoint, like, the teenage graboids uh, would ignite oh, gas out of their rear ends to oh, no, fly. Oh, no, 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 wait, 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 Doc, you forget the uh, middle transitional form. You're forgetting the middle form. You're forgetting the second evolution. <clears throat> it was like these um, these things the on legs. Oh, yeah. The Screechers, I think. Yeah, screechers. screechers. Yeah, Screechers. I still need to watch the newest one, A Cold Day in Hell. Oh my god, it sucks. Because it is, Tremors, it is all the Tremors so movies suck, that's why they're bad. the best movies ever. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I thought the first one was okay. Me too. The first all one was of, okay. I, I love all of the Tremors movies unironically. We should watch them in pen server. <laughs> God. Okay, anyway, no, okay. no. That one, just... No, do not watch that one. I need to. Because I like Tremors 5. F oh. There are fucking five. There's, There's six. six of them now. And a TV oh show. God, what and the they fuck? Switch, like, th there's, wait, there's a TV show? There's a fucking yeah. TV show? It I'm takes place try. in the valley of the... Uh, it takes place in the original valley, and there's an albino graboid, and the FBI, or not the FBI, the, like the government has deemed it an endangered species, so they aren't allowed to kill it, and they just have to like live with it and figure out creative ways of luring it away. Heading to bed soon. Wish you all a great time with the last critter. I'll watch the replay seat. Alright, Exus. Yeah, see you later. Bye-bye. It's Goot. 
I took five years of German and didn't learn a single thing. Uh, yeah, it, it's good night, uh, guten Morgen, guten Tag. Uh, but yeah, for night, it's just good. Taking five years of German and not learning a thing is one of my proudest accomplishments. I, I because just... after about the two-year mark, you would accidentally learn something. I... But no. Not yeah. if you're me. I I just it happen took, to grow it took up effort at the end there. I I just happen to grow up in a uh, very German part of PA. So. I took two years of French and I don't know anything anymore. I took Spanish in both middle and high school, and then I also took Spanish one and two in college, and I cannot carry a conversation. Yeah, no. <laughs> Okay, so amphibians. <laughs> are, are we doing an amphibian, thing. or do uh, you want? We? Or I think you had an idea, Doc. Uh, I was just thinking salamanders. They are less phallic. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the only thing I learned okay. in language classes is pronunciation. I've learned more just from like doing my own shit. Like, yeah. Um. I, I know how to learn Dutch. You learn German, and then every time there's a G, you just kind of cough up your lungs. Klude <laughs> <laughs> Morgen. <laughs> Guess it also helps that you're dating somebody from Denmark. No, no, you just learn German and replace the G's with. <laughs> <laughs> All right, BRB, my cat's acting up again. Okay. okay. Thanks for being a lazy shitbag, Bear. It's my cat, he's just pet? asleep on the floor next to me. You have a pet? Yeah, he's a big black cat. Uh, named Bear. Because he's wait, as big as a wait, bear. Wait, 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 Alright, I'm wait. back. Did Pen, Pen, did you say a boyfriend from Denmark? No, he's from the Netherlands, isn't he? Okay, okay, good. Because now he's spamming me saying Denmark, 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 Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mixed him up with somebody else I know who went from the UAE to Denmark. Denmark, Denmark, Denmark. Tell him I'm sorry, okay? He's in chat. He's some awe. He's. Oh, oh, I see. Wait. Yeah, he has a few aliases. We're the same. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not seeing it. Did my chat? Oh freeze? no, he's he's no. Are he's you not seeing me some? In I, I'm seeing I'm seeing some awe. Oi, no. <laughs> That's the last I saw. No. Yeah, he was. He oh, the now, now he's Pepe. Now he put a now he put a Pepe. Unless he posted he's, a picture. Unless he's like Look. spamming it in my Discord, which I highly doubt. No, it was in my Discord. He was DMing me. Ah. Uh. Denmark. Okay, so. Um, are we doing a salamander, or are we doing something else? I think, I think, uh, good... I mean, if anything, like, because glow or higher temperatures would also tend to lead to, like, forest fires and shit. And if they can survive that, then... Salamanders do have a good resilience to fire. Yeah, because they do tend to stay in water. Well, uh, no, uh, in... I mean, yes, obviously, but, uh, also... Salamanders in medieval bestiaries, which were the medieval Europeans' best approximation to a zoology textbook, um, it was written that salamanders were born of fire. Ooh. <laughs> because what would happen is that people would get logs, put them in the fire, and then salamanders would crawl out. Whoa. Uh, I see. It turns out salamanders like to hibernate in rotting logs. Oh, neat. That's and so when cool. salamanders are uh, in a fire or in a very hot environment, they will push all the water out of their body onto their skin, and then it evaporates away so that they don't get burned. The water takes the heat off of them. Wow. Hmm. So it's it's like not flat, like they can just better. wade through fires constantly just fine, but they can <laughs> scurry out of a burning bush if they need to. That's I see. Sweet. Well. Okay. Here we go. Do you want to send me a picture of a salamander? Oh, which one? Oh, wait, you already sent one. 
I think. No, you no, didn't. I didn't. I I didn't send a picture of a salamander. What species are we like? So salamander survived Australia. Um, Honestly, but, if we're going from ooh. after man, tiger salamanders being a pretty popular pet might give them the advantage. Well, I was also thinking that like the giant salamanders might also have a. Uh, you know, Those have things a, are already almost extinct. Yeah, but they would have a size advantage. They're almost already extinct. Oh, these babies, they're so cute. How about a hellbender? How about a tiger salamander? Because they're just so good damn cute. Alright. Yeah. All right. Giant salamanders look like they're made of scabs and old meeples. Hey. Mm. Hey, don't insult the giant mud puppy. I love giant salamanders, but they look like they're made of scabs. They are the ghouls of the salamander world. Wait, are we talking the Chinese or Japanese? Uh, both of them. Happy boy. Happy Move over. All right, yeah. so. Oh. This thing would probably have to be more aquatic than you could use the cuttlefish of Cthulhu for inspiration. Cuttlefish. Uh, Luckily, I have one of those up right here. Oh man! I think he's. I hate talking looking at that specific... picture of a of a penis snake. I keep looking at it, and it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> it's got so much attitude for having no facial features. What do you? I can mean? feel the emotions it's experiencing, and I don't enjoy that. <laughs> so anyway, uh, with our projected Earth. There would be a lot more uh, water to deal with. So I'm thinking this boy would be more aquatic than land based. Yeah. Which is honestly how salamanders kind of are. Well, if anything, because the problem that amphibians are having, the water is getting hard for them to live in. Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe bigger, sort of going along the lines of what you want, the uh, giant salamanders, maybe getting more robust, so more stocky. Yeah. They but might have to develop a way to either lay eggs out of water or keep eggs inside of their body. Buff boy. <laughs> ooh, ooh. What if it did what the uh, Surinamese toad does and keep it, like, literally inside their body? Oh, with the holes on their back? Yes. You're going to have to find picture ref for that. Their body. Uh, Shark Geek, I'm going to have to look that up uh, after stream. <laughs> or during stream. I, I don't know. Is it safe for work? Gross. Um, I'm just saying, like, if it has to lay its eggs out of water, or keep its eggs, you know, out of bad water. Ah, uh, the Suriman, uh, Suriname toad is disgusting. Would you think, uh, would his head stay, like, super rounded? Um, yeah, it's actually, that's pretty hydrodynamic, so. Yeah. Same with and his relative, it's, it's a cuttlefish-inspired cod piece formed by the singer of Guar. Oh, Okay. So you think it'd kind of adapt to the body of a cuttlefish with, like, the fin going around it, uh, right? No, 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 no. I'd say um, uh, it's Surinamese toad. What? The Surinamese toad is a... I posted a picture of it in the Discord. Aquatic oh my sea. god. What yep. the fuck is going So the Surinamese on? toad puts its eggs on its back. The eggs dig into its skin... And when the babies are ready to be born, they literally pop out of the mother's back like little pimples. Can I can I ask a question? Yes. Is this thing here its face? That's its face. Yeah, that's its face. Why is it so flat? You've Why got two eyes and then a little nose. Um gosh, there's a whole family of toads that have weird pinched in faces like that, which is odd because most frogs and toads have mouths that are as wide as their bodies. 
so 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 what what traits would these now share uh well it would probably have a broader back okay due to broader. uh you know having to have its eggs you know on its hurt on its self um and it would be a little bit stronger right yeah seeing as how it was yeah, uh, beefier legs and arms. Okay. It probably had to adapt to salt water, or at least brackish water. Ooh, how would that affect it? Well, how could it? Can well, they? I know with species such as bull sharks, they have this uh, special thing on their side called the lateral line. And that allows them to detect chemical traces in the water, and they can, God, they they can plan accordingly. I don't know how exactly they switch from salt to fresh water, but because um, I know that um, crocodiles, one of the defining traits that differentiates crocodiles from alligators is crocodiles have a salt gland, and alligators don't. So alligators can't drink salt water. Crocodiles can. That's why alligators mainly live only in freshwater, because that's what they can safely drink. Um, so it might have to develop some sort of extra gland mm. in it. I can't really illustrate that. Yeah, I yeah, don't think it would... Yeah. I don't really think I, it'd that's be... That's what I was trying to think of, like, would it be noticeable? Yeah, would it be a... Uh... <laughs> this boy! What if it had, like... <laughs> Oh my god, he's so muscular. He's so swole. <laughs> Nothing's going to fuck with him. It's All a right. salamander. Like, have you like ever seen those like clips of those like raging gamers and they have like a desk here with like a and then yeah. they're like bashing down on it. <laughs> That's what he looks like. This is this is his dude. Swole. Yeah, I don't think it'd be like a noticeable difference. It'd probably be like an internal like organ or something. What, is what, if they, be long? Uh, what about like axolotl's external gill structures? Ooh, it's... you know what? That might actually that actually might be helpful. Okay. Axolotl. I love axolotls. Yeah, axolotls are so cute. Aren't they going extinct or something? Uh, soon? they're endangered, but uh, which is impressive considering how hard they are to actually kill. Yeah, they actually are hard to kill. Well, actually, well, no. Um, I was actually researching them, like, just for shits and giggles, like, to keep them as a pet. They are surprisingly hard to keep as a pet. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because you have to, like... I don't know. What do they eat? I know they suck it. Uh, worms. Uh, small fish. So what's hard about them to keep? Uh, you have to constantly do water changes, oh. like, every week. You can't have any sort of fine substrate, That's or else they'll get stuck fish. in their gills. But you oh, also God. can't really have any, like, sharp stones, because it'll also cut their skin. Oh my god. Um, you... So what about an axolotl? Oh, the uh, external gills. The, the, the little pink, fluffy fluffy things. things. Yeah. These things? Yeah. Aww. Yeah. The little whoop uh, thingies. <laughs> Which, like, there was a, a salamander that was like a crocodile and, like, 15, 20 feet long, and a lot of reconstructions mm. give it those external gills. There's not a lot of How good signs hurt? either way, but... I, I thought they were just kind of to scare things off, like make them look bigger. Nope, no, those they are actually gills. Uh, help it breathe. Yeah. Imagine eating something good. on the outside to breathe. That's bizarre. How does the oxygen get in? <laughs> Is it like stuck in the hairs? Um, I don't know. Gosh, how do axolotls work? Axolotters are so cool. I love them. Oh my god. And then the eggs on the back. Yeah. That's so, how does how do the eggs get on the fucking back? What the fuck? I guess the male puts them on there. I 
think that would be the only oh, thing that makes sense. Either that or they have a forward facing off a positor. So weird. Oh yeah, no no no. In terms of amphibians to the stegosaur. In terms of amphibians, the male puts him on the back. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, I th I thought so. Thank you, Sharky. Nads. Any questions about any animal's reproduction at this point? Just give me horrible flashbacks to the Stegosaurus reproduction debate. Oh god, I just... I, the image of an echidna dick just flashed into my mind. And not even that. Like, there's one idea for how Stegosaurus <clears throat> reproduced in that, like, the male would secrete a spike. And then he would put his spermazoa on it, and then the female would walk over and squat down on top of it. That's How so would weird. that work? Because they got spiny spines on the back. Yeah, no one's really sure. It could just be the male, or either the male or the female was laying on their <laughs> side, and then the one was coming in. Coming in. Fuck. Yeah. Oh it's God. weird, and I don't know why so many people t want to talk about dinosaur reproduction so know, much. Right? Like, one of the few mounts in the world, one of the few skeletal displays in the world that has two different T-Rex skeletons has them in a speculated reproductive pose. Oh my god. People mm. are weird, man. What about and it's like, yeah, I guess that's part of the science, mm. but how much cooler would it have been to have had them fighting each other because they're T-Rex? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's fucking T-Rex, man. Like, I don't want to be an uh, awesome bro. Don't plenty of fishes do that? Do what? Yeah, uh, plenty of fish, the males just sprays out the spermazoa and then the female and fertilizes herself with it. The question is yeah. just, would an animal as derived from fish as Stegosaurus be able to do something like that? And uh, anyway. the answer to any of these questions, which is the answer to literally every question in paleontology, is we need more evidence to be sure. So, 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 uh, you're in a dark car door. You know the lights. It's it's are, aren't God. working. It's very dark. And see this thing <laughs> coming out of the fucking dark oh towards God. you. What, what color is it? What color is it? I don't know. Um, tiger salamander colors. Tiger colors. Well, are we putting are we putting poison on it? I don't know. How big <laughs> is it? Wow. How big I is don't it? Don't know. Beef. I mean, we're How making it beefy, it? so. Oh, he needs oh my gosh, what if, because it's carrying its eggs on its back to keep them out of water, what if it still lives in swamp areas, but it's got like an upright gorilla-esque posture to keep its back out of the water? Oh god. <laughs> A gorilla mander. So, so what's going on back here? What would go on back here? Would it have like a tail thing? Yeah, it would have a tail. Would it have legs? Yes. It Give it legs. gorilla posture. We're not making it a gorilla mander. Make it a gorilla. We're not oh, making no. it a gorilla mander. Gorillas Give are cool, wings. and everything is cooler when you make them like a gorilla. Okay, fuck it. Make a gorilla mander. How do I? How help? <laughs> um, instead of bending its front arms like that, have them down in front of it, and then give it tiny little back legs. Oh, like like here. But then we also have to like change the gills. Oh what darn, you're right. Here? Oh, okay. I mean, I guess they could be like down facing, or like, like more dreads. to the or like more to the side, like uh, shark gills. Ooh. Or if it's like trying to hold itself out of mm. water, what if they hang down like dreads so they're <gasps> filtering air out That's below it? Neat. Like hang it off of their chin like a beard, <gasps> like a billy goat manly. beard. So manly. Big boy. What are we doing? I don't know. I love Okay, it. okay, oh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on. What so this thing stays, he tries to keep its back out of the water. So I'm trying to, like, I'm imagining this thing floating. Kind of like um, our Nautilus boy. Like, I'm imagining this thing floating. And then using, like, yeah, using its muscular arms to, like, Pull quickly, along. yeah. 
How would it protect itself? I think you just designed a Diablo 3 monster, and I think I like it. Well, <laughs> I... Yeah. And then I'm thinking, like, kind of like a crocodile. If it sees, like, a prey animal, it'll go to the bottom of whatever body of water it's in, and then strike from below. Oh my god. What if it... How to react to a predator. How did we agree on how big it is? Because that would affect... It could be massive. <laughs> I don't care. I'm saying tiger, let's go giant salamander size. Okay, so it's... Would it, oh, would the eggs... So would giant salamander size, so like... Six feet. feet tall? Six, oh, six fucking feet. feet. Okay. Cool. I can't really show that, but like at least we know it's bigger now. Yeah. Well, that was more just thinking about how it would defend itself from predators. Yeah. So how would it? How would I it? I don't know. Well, if this thing is six feet long, I feel like it could just pummel predators. Yeah, it would just beat the shit out of anything that came near it. Like how? Yeah, feet. gorillas have predators, but. If they catch a jaguar, they just kind of beat the tar out of it. Little feet. <laughs> Look at his little feet. We'll say it's perspective. <laughs> no, I can make it I can make it a bit bigger. <laughs> I'll be a little bit generous. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. It uh this thing stays near the top of the water. With its eggs on its back, it could just look like a bumpy log, kind of like a crocodile. And then, using the gills that come underneath its mouth, it uses those to breathe. Yeah, and it can like kind of get off the land, but it can still breathe underneath the water. That's such cool design. Yeah. And they're not too long as that they'd be like a... Yeah, it wouldn't be dragging underneath its stomach. Yeah. I mean, maybe even he'd, as a muscular boy, have, be able to flex them up. I don't know how they or work. Or even, like, do, like, a bit of an alligator waddle. To get from, like, <laughs> one, you know... Alligators on. can do a sort of gallop up to a certain size. So, what I'm seeing right now, this these don't make any sense, because I feel like he's just scooting across the floor. <laughs> just the way his legs are, he's just scooting. He's too swole, that's just his <laughs> default <laughs> position. Like, like, imagine his legs going like, doo -doo 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 -doo, and he's just going, wee. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, okay, this is my last thing. I'm I'm going to sleep up to this. Oh yeah, no, no, I, I think we're done after this. We've been going yeah, for two and a half hours. Good night, everyone. Sure. I wish you luck in designing these critters. All right, bag the crab. Yeah, this is the last one for the night. Um, bye bye. All these will be posted on my Discord. So if you're interested in seeing these, be sure to join. Link is in the Twitch description. Yeet. Oh man, I remember when I first found your uh, found your streams, and you had to just kind of give it out whenever people asked for it. <laughs> And we nagged you to add it to the description, and you did. And here we are. That was a very interesting story. I'm very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell it's like 4 a.m. I'm, 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 I'm losing it, fam. I'm good though. Uh, are Are you good? Can we? Oh, are, can you finish this? Yeah, totally. All right. I can finish lots of things. I'm, so, I'm sorry uh, we. I'm sorry we decided to keep you up so late. Oh no no no! My streams normally used to go to like five a.m. Bro, I'm fine. It's just I wouldn't Shit. talk in them after like three a.m. So no one could know. Okay, okay. Where are we going? Where are we going? Yeah, and I'm over here in the western U.S. and it's not even uh, ten o'clock for me yet. Good job. Would you have like a fin? like went down his body kind of like an axolotl if, if um i don't even know if it'll be underwater much well if you notice with the tiger salamander his tail kind of flattens out to make a paddle yeah a lot like the crocodile tails do turn oh into a God. paddle okay yeah, and he's so small does he even need a paddle he just does a breaststroke <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm loving this guy. What do y'all think of this dude? What 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 would y'all in chat do if you saw this guy dragging himself towards you? I'd probably <laughs> fucking run in the other direction and be like, oh shit. I don't know. I'm one of those weirdos who I'd like get down and be like, oh my gosh, look at you. And then, you bite you your fucking be and then like get my arm bitten off. And then that's the end of Doc as he dies yeah. from an infection. <laughs> yeah. Man, one of my friends, uh, he works with uh, crocodiles. And he was, well, in the middle of telling someone, hey, even though this dwarf came and is only two feet long, it's still dangerous. The time it took him to do that, the dwarf came and whipped around, grabbed his arm, twisted, and gave him 29 Ooh, stitches. God. Ooh. What colors are we going for? That guy's hardcore. I'm thinking. Are we, are we done with the I'm thinking design? shark colorations. Dark on top, like... light on bottom. Oh, okay. What I missed was doing stuff. We did the impossible and we designed a amphibian that could survive the apocalypse. We designed a Hulk a salamander. Boss. A swolamander. Swolamander. Oh my god, do you guys want to go over just some of the changes that we got going on? Like, All the, right. Like the uh, so we have axolotl gills so we can breathe underwater. We made it swole as fuck. So it could beat anything that threatens it down into submission. And carry we, its babies on its back. A bit more carry its babies on its back so it doesn't have to worry about nasty water or, you know, anything trying to eat it on land. And, uh, yeah. That's, I, th I think that's pretty much it. And a big flat tail if he needs it with his swole ass freaking arms. Does your magic compensate for lack of oxygen that the plank then die? We'll be fine. It's okay, a it's so an dark, amphibian. Dark It'll suck out the oxygen mm. from the from the water. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. What yeah. what kind of colors though? If it's dark on top and light on the bottom, I'm thinking brown, gray. Uh, okay. Doc, I'm you just got anything to put in? Down, so. Um. Hmm. Hi, Dashi. Are you going to behave? Hmm? Are you going to behave? Now? You. Uh, it'd be tricky because you definitely want the eggs to blend in with it because it wouldn't want things to want to eat the eggs. However, from an artistic standpoint, uh, you know, and the water doesn't you make the oxygen the plankton the do. There is oxygen in the water. I mean, come on, you need oxygen for water. Well, what if we don't have oxygen? Well, then, well, then we don't have water. <laughs> Then we just have a bunch of hydrogen. Oh, lit. And carbon. You know what we have? Propane. And you know what else we have? Propane accessories. But what if we're what if we're anti-pain? Bro. I don't like pain. Same. Controversial stance, but I agree with you. <laughs> I'm I'm pro good things, anti bad things. Exactly. So what are you talking about, bro? Oh my god, I do the best Hank Hill impression I've ever seen. I couldn't resist just now. Oh uh, uh, that was Shark Geek. I made a reference to the to the King of Hill. Don't tell me you've never seen King of the Hill. I have hey. big fan. Okay. Oh now I'm you're gonna behave. stay quiet. <laughs> I love this boy. He looks so dark and menacing. <laughs> I'm He's gonna the change Batman the poems after salamanders. I just, I'm making sure I fill it out right before I actually like do basic colors. Like sure I could I could probably do something more effective, but I'm still trying to get used to the brushes in this program. <laughs> There we go. So, 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 you're saying, you were saying, like, browns, right? Or blues? Yeah, I was thinking, like, maybe, like, some darker greens, browns. Uh, okay. 
Ooh, I like that color. And then lighter on the bottom. Yeah. I don't know if I can show that, though. Hank and the Hank is the best show ever. Then she never answered. Has Hank she... the Hank. <laughs> Has she seen King of the Hill? Bruh, no. <laughs> I don't think they air it over in Great Britain. It'd make them too jealous of what we have over here. Those holes. Yeah, we don't even own a TV. If it's on TV. So I used like... to stream Destiny 2 Nightmare Strikes with randoms in Hank's voice whenever strangely well with Brits. And what went strangely well oh, with Brits? Hell. Uh, streaming Destiny 2 Nightmare Strikes with randos. In Hank Hill's voice. Oh my god. I don't know who that is, but that's cool. Damn it, Bobby! No. I mean, I'm gonna have to introduce you to King of the Hill. Okay, cool. That's gonna have to be, like, a movie Lantern. week. Like we won't be able to cover it, like, in a movie night. We're gonna have to cover it in, like, a movie week. What colors would be on the lower parts of it, though? Um, if it's living in a swamp, it might have light greens, actually. Yeah, like yeah. a lighter green. Ooh, I'm so excited for the, how this is going to turn out. The stream might end while I'm working on this, because I think y'all are running out of things to, to talk about. But and like, just show uh, her the best I actually episodes. just mm. accidentally picked up my phone and got a bit lost on the Twitter timeline. That's fair. Oh, I heard a cat. Yeah, he's right here, and he's finally, like, calming down. Oh, yeah. finally, as we're ending. The cat Are you knows finally cool? Up. Are you finally cool? Yeah. Or the pimp episode. Okay, we'll have to make a list of the good episodes, and then we can show them. Um, this I'm... is how I feel when I try to show one of my friends Steven Universe. Oh, God. <laughs> I still have to finish Future. Steven Universe I... Future? Uh, no episodes have been released for a while, I don't think. Okay. Well, that's good. It's on Gives a hiatus. Catch up. Yeah, I, I get this, but it's with things like Clone High, because I fucking love Clone High so much. I've never, I've never seen it, but that. I've heard good things about it. What is it? Oh, okay, so um, way, way back in the you. 1980s, a bunch of secret dudes and ladies dug up ancient uh, guys and gal. Oh, fuck, I don't remember the whole theme song. Basically, they are clones of historical figures in high school. Oh my god. It was an MTV animated show, and it's great. You've got the main lead, awkward teenage Abraham Lincoln, with his best friend, prankster Mahatma Gandhi, and the, the girl he hangs out with who has feelings for him, but he is too dense to notice it because this is every teenage high school story ever, Joan of Arc. Oh my goodness. Abe Lincoln, of course, has feelings for the head cheerleader prep girl, Cleopatra, but she is in an on-again, off-again relationship with high school jock and football star JFK. Oh. I was expecting Caesar. No, it's... I think uh, Caesar's in there. I don't remember what his thing is. <clears throat> like, the geeky oh, science man. kid is George Washington Carver. Oh, I was about to say. Leon is the cool guy everyone likes. And then he dies, and it's so sad. Shit. No! Wait, so have you I, seen I Aqua Teen know. Hunger Force? Yes, I've seen Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Everyone's seen Aqua Teen Hunger Force. But that entire show concept reminds me of, uh, because I used to study psychology, and I can't remember any of them anymore, but I used to ship the psychologists together oh, so geez. that I kind of remember them and how they relate to each other. <laughs> Freud and Jung with a, uh, they were frenemies. They were <laughs> fucking on the DL. Because we might disagree ice. on a few things, but I will say, your lips look very soft. And I'm not saying that because of my Oedipus effect. My brain just had like a billion thoughts at once, and all of them were awful and traumatizing because of that prompt. What prompt cool. was? Just the idea of sh shipping psychology <laughs> professors. <laughs> I'm sorry. And name the best ATHF episode. I don't... I don't know. What color would um, his eyes be? 
What's the name? eyes? Probably what are amphibian black. eyes like? A lot of amphibians black. are black. Um, yeah, well, like how do their that, eyes or they're work? Like, well, either that or they're like clear. Uh, the one where mm-hmm. Zach Wild was in the animatronic fan hands down. Uh, I don't remember. Anyone here seen Xavier Renegade Angel? Oh my god, I have. That uh, that that show was a fucking trip. <laughs> it's uh, like there, there's a lot of Adult Swim shows that <laughs> are funnier when you're sleep deprived at one a.m. Like uh, Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law, or yeah. even like Good Space Ghost Coast to Coast gets funnier the more tired you are. Good uh, thing I'm constantly in that state. <laughs> Xavier Renegade Angel is something where you watch it and you feel like it would be funnier if you were sleep deprived, but then you get to watch it tired. And it's not, but you still kind of enjoy it. You just don't know why. It's it's surprisingly deep. I it's really like Xavier Renegade Angel. deep for what it is. Yeah? You have something to say? It's... Hold, hold, hold on, hold on. My cat has something to say, I think. Oh, okay. <gasps> really? Is that what you have to say? Is that what you have to say? Hmm? Are you done? No. Okay, I, I think he's done. I think he's done. Aww. I'm sorry for the introduction. I'm so sad now, Pam. Oh. It, it, it's weird. Xavier Renegade Angel. Yeah. Uh, if all the weird lol so random internet content and all the hey look at me I'm so deep internet content was the same stuff. If, yeah, it, it's like the love child between the two. It's like crazy deep, but also like on the surface, just insane. Completely nonsensical. But at the same time, like under a more intense lens, it's like. Whoa. I bet you only have one peen. <laughs> oh God, there was this one. Like I could recite the fucking. Yes. God, the one episode where he meets himself and has that dialogue, I used to, like, I can recite that from memory, but I don't think the I could The only way to settle this is with the Shaka Shuri blowdown. God, if I saw it, I bet I could remember it. There are so, just from that episode, there are so many good one-liners. <laughs> okay. I bet you respond to rhetorical questions. <laughs> God, oh, fuck, I wish I could remember that. <laughs> fuck, uh... And your tongue is as sharp as a soup spoon. <laughs> if you love soup so much, why don't you marry soup? Because I'm already married to justice. justice. <laughs> oh my god. Well, that sounds like something you'd hear in, like, a Batman parody. You're so... When... You, uh, uh, (laughs) so much of it just doesn't make any sense, but it does, but it doesn't. Okay, I think, I think this is it for this. Like, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is so, so much of the dialogues, like you hear it and you're like, oh, I bet like, if you think about that, it's like a parody or something. Then you think about it more and you're like, oh no, that doesn't make any sense. Mm. But Uh, maybe it does. What do you guys think of moral oral? I've never seen it. Uh, I was always a bigger fan of Frankenhole. I've seen some episodes. I think I've seen some episodes of Frankenhole. I laughed at that one. What can one... I say? A uh, red haired scientist who is smarter than everyone around him and hates everyone around him is just. It's nice representation. So, kind of like Rick, except Ginger. Mm. And, like. I don't know. The show doesn't make any qualm it it doesn't feel like it justifies him nearly as much as it does rick rick and marty's good like there's the episode where uh frankenstein has a a surgery to change gender just so that he can prove to his wife that women are inferior to men okay i how how does this look for the Uh, i like it 
the, I, I, I can recall what it looks like, but right now it's a little blocky for me. But yeah, I, oh. I'd say it's good. Cool. What? Yeah. I'm almost done, I promise, okay? Then we can cuddle, I promise. Cool. What? Should we have done kitty cats? Should we have talked about kitty cats, huh? <sighs> Sorry, I I think I think he wants us to talk about kitty cats. So, mm -hmm. kitty cats. They're fluffy. Yeah. I was if we do this again, I was thinking of how prey animals because big cats are kind of the dominant predators in most land I would ecosystems. Love to do this again. How this would prey really animals bad. try to adapt to counter what big cats are doing currently? Yeah. And how uh, would big cats respond? Yeah, I'd definitely love to do this again, but maybe with a different um, uh, lens to look through. Like, maybe yeah. we could, like, um... I thought you were going to say different artists, and I was about to cry. No, 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 no. You you seem like you really enjoyed this, and, you know, if you're free I that night... I good stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, I really enjoyed it. I think it looked really good. Uh, oh, and yeah. if you guys want, again, if you guys want to see this, uh, you know, it'll be all be in the art channel in my Discord server. Uh, if mm -hmm. you're not a member and you want to be part of it, go to the Twitch description. Um, Though maybe we should find a way, maybe we should multi multi stream next time so that we can e we can have it coming directly from me. Yes, I think multi streaming would uh, work better. Just what would you put on your screen? Uh, I guess. Just reference images, either maybe. me or a reference or um, you know maybe I could put up my audio visualizer software I don't know but um yeah we'll have to work this out like yeah, I think because I'm sorry about all of the problems with um oh no 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 I mean it, it it's not like you had any say in it yeah no my internet is bad <laughs> yeah. Well, internet's bad, and also we're just kind of daisy chaining this through two links before the stream. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, we probably could have polished this just a little bit better, but uh, we, yeah, we did pretty well, I think. Yeah, I, I had fun. Um, I'm not sure about you guys, but you know, whatever. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Yeah, All right, uh, pretty... thank you again, guys, for joining me. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys have anything you want to, you know, link or whatever. Um, Thank you everyone so much for hanging out. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry. Um, I Mango, you have a Twitch channel, right? I have a Twitch channel. I, I draw weird shit on there and also play video games. I, I, eh. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yep. Check her out. She's pretty fun. I should add her to the streamer thing shouldn't I? Yeah, I wanna add her to the streamer thing. And Doc, you got anything you wanna you know I've got a YouTube channel I do stuff on every once a year or so. Alright. Watch 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 uh Nerdin' Out on YouTube dot com. AKA the Moist Internet. Gary. It's actually not called Moist Gary anymore. I was talked out of that name and then immediately back to it but only in character Sad. Sad. she was very pretty you see so it oh, was understandable god. why i was convinced not to oh god i do love the name moist gary with every part of my being what is... all right <laughs> okay. if you look that up that's m-o-y-s-t-g-a-r-y uh, all right huh. Thank you guys again for doing this. Um, Thanks for having me on. Yeah, uh, we have to do this again sometime. It was fun. We totally do. This is we are done. Yeah, uh, so... Yeah. Alright, peace out, guys. Bye. Peace. And as for you guys, um, that's... Oh, Connor hosted me with one viewers. Well, thank you, Connor. I don't know why that doesn't show up on my phone, but, you know, whatever. But yeah, this has been a fun stream.
We'll have to do this again sometime, because I actually really enjoyed that. Um, Except for when you decided to attack me. Yeah. That was unasked for. All right, I feel like that was uncalled for, but you know. Uh, did you see Serial Experiments? No. No, I did not. Sorry, I really haven't been in an anime mood lately. And we've been going on for three hours, and I think that's good. I I really should get the, uh, um, my stamina up. You know, I, I should probably do more, like, Saturday streams. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, again, charity stream, March 10th. Be there or be square. I gain my guests together. I'm getting my schedule together. Shit is coming together, people. It is. It is going to be. You know, it's going to be a thing. All right. Um. Yeah. All right. I, I think that's all I have to say. So uh, yeah. Peace out. Um. Have have a good one, y'all. See you on Thursday. I'll probably be playing random horror games. I think I uninstalled the Stanley Parable. So, mm, random horror games it is. Yeah. Alright, peace out.